I did forget to see it. Oh, good. The, the microphone is on. Thank um, God. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Go us. Hey, guys. We have a new background. Um, Kat, come say hi. Yeah. Oh, my God. We have to come give show you your credit. face. We have to give you credit. Aw. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kat did the marvelous backdrop. Hi. Kat did the backdrop. So, she is, she is a production assistant now. <laughs> <laughs> She's officially a contractor at the Lord. <laughs> We have that's yeah we've hired a few people actually recently yeah. um, between you know having Cat help us out with the studio stuff and uh, Logan if you're in there somewhere um, or uh, Der Draca on on uh, no you're uh, Draco Logan or something on YouTube I'm not entirely positive but he is a uh, an archaeologist so we had we brought him on board to help us out specifically with this episode so that's why I wanted to give him a shout out here yeah. uh, he did a great job he did some source analysis and compilation for me. Um, so rather than me having to do all of the work of going to find uh, sources on things, I was able to have him just bring me stuff that I could then read. Yeah. Which was, th that probably saved me five to ten hours of, of time. That much? Yeah. <laughs> like, I knew it saved you time, but I knew it like, saved that me much. Time. I'm also going to, this is bugging me hell, like my back hurts. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm elderly, I'm aging. <laughs> I'm aging. We're getting older. Oh, God. oh, yeah, Jesus. We're both 25 now. Yeah, and that one ancient men. I have to. We have to get health insurance this year. Ryan, don't worry. It's a it's a tail, not a bun. Yeah, no bun. He's he's rocking the uh, the Nathan Hale over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old uh, the old Mel Gibson in the Patriot. It's it's two things. It's one. I haven't showered in days because I was in the woods all weekend. And well, that's got to be fun for you. <laughs> <laughs> the poor woman. Uh, and also just like, no, that's really the main reason. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Remind yeah. me to like turn a fan over there. Um yep. grimy little lad. It's not worse than Archie's breath. Archie's breath has gotten better since we removed thirty seven teeth from his mouth. Um <laughs> The poor boy. You know what? It's it has worked out for him because he used to mostly get kibble and then sometimes get human food. And tonight I cooked an entire sweet potato and beef stew for him. Yeah. So he is He's spoiled. That dog is so spoiled. He's yeah. currently with my stepdad and probably getting all sorts of other treats. So, you know, oh my gosh, that he is he is quite the quite the spoiled animal. <laughs> I don't look like Custer because I was starting to feel concerned about the facial hair on my face. Where else would the facial hair be? No, it was more about the look that it was Oh, it was making you look like Custer? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It was a little like you were getting there. Yeah, it was a little it was it was beginning to feel questionable because, like, I wasn't really paying that much attention to a mirror. And then I mm -hmm. looked in it for about, like, more than five seconds. And mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like I'm just going to be accused of something with this. Why, why, why don't we like Custer? It's li just want to hear how you answer this question. That's literally all it is. Well, didn't he just completely fail? Like, horribly? Alongside also committing a few war crimes. Oh, he did? It. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know but if yeah, he Custer, will. Custer failed pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going for that Jack Aubrey vibe now. Yeah. You yeah. know what we should do? We should just go. We should we should just grow it. We should choose Civil War generals and, and just grow our hair out. I'd say Grant, but I don't want to become a raging alcoholic. I'd say Sherman, but I don't want to burn half the South. <laughs> um, can I burn Dallas? Uh, Sherman's march through Dallas. I just want to get rid of the Cowboys. Fair. Yeah, That's literally as, all. As I, I have no problem yeah. with the rest of Dallas. I'm sure it's a wonderful city. Just your football team is so annoying. Yes. Like, every, every, I know that we're still not onto the topic of the show, but I feel like we always jump right in and, you know, it's, it's, and then I run out of content. Gotta ease people I run in. out of material, but what yeah. I wanted to say about the Cowboys is, you know, like, it's incredible that this is a franchise who refers to itself as America's team and constantly talks about having five Super Bowl rings when they haven't made the NFC Championship in my lifetime. You know what that reminds me of? What? Liverpool's soccer team. I don't know anything about soccer. Ryan, tell me if you, uh, if you're familiar with that. You're the only one that I know here at British. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, like, imagine, imagine not doing anything of note for 25 years and then being like, you know, back in the day. <laughs> they still brag about, like, they, they say Dak Prescott owns the NFC East. I'm like, I am so tired of the name Dak he Prescott. He won less playoff games than Nick Foles. Really? Yes. That's shocking. Nick Foles won more playoff games in a single year. Than Dak Prescott has really? ever won. Yes. That's shocking. <laughs> so, sorry to open the episode talking about football. 
But uh, I needed something because, to be honest, this this has been a long week. I have had the longest week. <laughs> there is so much evil in the world. <laughs> yeah, this research couldn't have been easy for you. No. Um. Th so the research for this video was was a lot. Um. And then the research I did for next week's video. <laughs> yeah, it's was difficult. Um. I cried topic. a few times. Uh, I'm not gonna lie about that. There were yeah. a few moments where I had to sit back and breathe, um, but it's fine. We just have to spend four hours shooting that after tonight's show. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we're probably gonna get backlash from both sides of the aisle. Uh, yeah. Do so, we want to say what it's about? Or? Sure. Yeah. I mean, so so next week's video and next week's podcast, which we should have a guest for who who does not like who you are. Um, okay. Who who wants to who, who I was like let's be fair let's be balanced let's you know let's do can we say who yet or no? Uh, he goes by Staxiums. Okay. On on TikTok. Okay. Uh, so he wanted to come on. Also, uh, Damian Moore from American Crime Journal. Uh, I talked to about him coming on because I was pretty critical of his work. Mm. And I I I thought we had a productive conversation. He was supposed to reach out and I haven't heard from him. Got it. Um, you know, I'm going to give him some more time, but we'll see how that goes. But next week's video, next week's podcast are going to be on the movie Sound of Freedom, the organization Operation Underground Railroad, and the criticisms of those two things as well. So our goal with that is going to be, hey, here's what the movie is. Here's what happens in the movie. Here's what the real story is. Here's what the criticisms are of how the movie portrayed the real story and the organization yeah. itself. And then here are the like QAnon the alleged QAnon links. Yeah, which would um, be good because honestly, I'm not even that familiar with that yeah. whole conspiracy. And, and that's the thing is, as I was looking through it, there there's a there's a lot of examples of OUR and Tim Ballard exaggerating. Mm -hmm. All of the articles criticizing OUR and Tim Ballard exaggerate just as much. Yeah. So it's like, shockingly enough, yeah, once, the, the truth is somewhere yeah. in the middle. Once again, I have to sift through the BS from both sides. Yep. Um, which is basically what I did for this video. That's what uh, we do. Like, it's literally what we do. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I like how our content has basically become like, hey, here's this really bombastic claim some people made. Yep. A bunch of people said it's complete BS. It's only a little BS. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is. Let's but show you where the BS is, like we did with Bohemian Grove. That was the one that got us called controlled opposition. Um, <laughs> but yeah exactly i'm like my guys we said bigfoot is real six months ago uh yeah <laughs> and provided evidence yeah literally and then proceeded to go but it's not bigfoot so to speak yeah, yeah. Um, but it's yeah it's tribe for for the topic of tonight's discussion however yes we're talking about uh malta which i have always uh thought of as cool because of the knights hospitaller mm -hmm. because back in the 1500s after they basically had land nowhere else mm -hmm. they managed to acquire malta they made it their home base they weren't the Knights Hospitaller of old. They weren't crusading and yeah. all of that, but they were doing things. I'm actually thinking we might do a video on that for the History Hut because I already mm -hmm. have the stuff for the Templars. So yeah. if I'd spend a week research researching the Hospitallers, we can do a video on both. Sweet. Um, but Malta is cool because it is a tiny archipelago, mm -hmm. three main islands, just south of Sicily, between Sicily and Tunisia. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 500,000 people. Basically, the entire population lives in the city of Valletta. Mm -hmm. But the, the culture is pretty Italian. It's like it, basically a mix of Italian and, and Mo Moorish. Okay. North African. But then what you've got is a national language that's Semitic. So think Phoenician, Hebrew, Arabic. But the second national language is English. Because until 19, I want to say 64, mm -hmm. it was considered a British colony. It was owned by the British Empire. It has been populated and depopulated several different times between 5900 BC and today, to the point of the actual culture on the island completely disappearing and then reemerging as That's something wild. as something new. So basically, you would it, think about like if you boil down. Um, I'm trying to think of a, a good example here, but say say you boil down um, beef stock. Mm -hmm. until you get to like you get the water out of it and you've got a very viscous kind right and then you just add chicken stock in and then vegetable stock and you just keep repeating the process of boiling it down and then you get a weird broth that's malta i wonder what that tastes like not good Aiden. not good but things that do taste good are the three meat bolognese sauce i made tonight i have to attest it was delicious cat how'd you think of it it was so good <laughs> it was literally so so good 
I'm yeah. not gonna lie, I thought you were gonna plug the coffee there. But... No, no, I'm I'm so proud of that sauce. I'm telling you guys, <laughs> three three bottles of like your your preferred uh, Barilla tomato sauce, a pound of chorizo, a pound of hot Italian sausage, and a pound of ground beef. Y you will never need another sauce. Like you might want another sauce, but you'll never need another sauce. I might be a little lost in the sauce. The uh, it would seem as so. Yeah, I'm still thinking about that sauce, man. <laughs> We're, we all <laughs> sometimes, yeah. So, anyway, now that the sauce and the uh, the soup are out of the way, you know, the broth. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that just reminded me of one of our high school yep, group yep, chats. I, it, it didn't hit until you just said it. The yeah, broth. the broth. Uh, yep. Oh, boy. That's um, funny. Yeah, I was telling uh, I was telling the story of the group chat I have with Norman, Tommy, and John, mm -hmm. the, the Virgin Dix one. Yeah, that. You need to explain that. To I the can't. <laughs> <laughs> there's there is too much lore there it goes <laughs> it goes back way too far but where's the lore i would be, I would be doxing myself if i explained yeah, no, that story yeah, you don't do that. <laughs> be like here's why i worked when i was 15 <laughs> um how much more information do you need i'm pretty sure there are people out there who that would be enough information for them to find out everything about me um which is not great uh, <laughs> i would i would prefer to not uh you know dig up my you know, my 14-year-old self ever again. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to dig up their 14-year-old no. self. Unless you're, like, a ghost who died at 14, and maybe you want to, like, get your body back. Even at that point. That would be a short film we could do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to start making more short films. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, that, I thought you were going to elaborate a little bit more. Do you want to tell them what they're going to be about? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know yet. That's the, the two thing. we've discussed? Oh, well, I mean, yeah. The well, the three we've... We, we've, we're working on Asylum. We've written We Went Camping. That just needs to be expanded. Yes. And, then and then whatever the third one's going to be called. What's the green one? Well, there's there's the the doing the pre or the pre the or prelude to We Went Camping. Yeah, I thing. think we're just going to disconnect them entirely at this That's point. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah, so have that be its own thing. And then yeah. also the, the Greenland thing. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. one was actually on Storytime. Oh, that's right. I, I, I did a that. full narration of that. We should do that one again. Yeah. That'd be you great. and I can narrate it together. Yeah, easily. Um, yeah, so we've got four I want to say four ideas ranging uh, between like 10 to 30 minutes yeah, roughly yeah. a couple of them are features though to yeah. be fair um we went camping is going to be a feature and then i think we could make a, a 90 minute out of out of hunters no easily, easily. yeah no it, it deserves to be a feature i think so too yeah. um and that one's going to be a very like old school like just action movie yeah with a cool modern premise which yeah. i think is going to be the fun part uh to give you guys who haven't who haven't heard the story time or read the story, which I think is on Patreon. I think it I'm is. I'm almost yeah. positive Hunters is on Patreon. Um, and you can read that for a dollar. So, uh, that that's, you know, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So that one follows a NATO Special Operations Force, which goes into various old Cold War research sites, one of which is in Greenland, and their job is to secure information from that period. In this, their past operations have mostly been, you know, uh, computers and files and, you know, the, the occasional, like, weapon mm -hmm. that they had to... There was something in my... You good? Yeah, there was just, like, a water? eyelash or something. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's always annoying. So, usually they're securing weapons or uh, research or something like that. In this case, they come across... This This lab was used for human experimentation. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Yeah. And I'll say this explosives are involved <laughs> yes yes <laughs> that's yeah. all that's all you need to know about the story i don't want to spoil it for you yeah. in case you want to read it again uh it should be on patreon i'll go and check tonight and make sure it is uh, yeah. but that's a that's a good one i'll probably post like a an excerpt as a public post as well in case you want to see it before you pay we went camping is going to be a story about a group of college kids going camping in the woods and they get hunted down by a wendigo yes uh so that should be fun as well i think that was the first project you and i ever like worked on together in an official capacity yeah too. i agree that he, was written when i was a sophomore in college yes and yeah. he wrote it it was a a short film like a, a medium length film and mm -hmm. i'm currently in the process of revising it and bringing it out to feature length and then we're going to collaborate and yeah see what we want to change dialogue not. stuff like that. exactly and then we've got uh there's a prelude in that script or in that story yeah. that we're going to make its own short film that'll probably be about like Somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes. Yeah, I think it'll be 10 to 20 minutes. That yeah. one is going to follow the story of an early European explorer. We're talking like early, mid-1700s, before the French and Indian War. But yeah. um, he's going to... So the story follows him. He's out uh, looking, looking, basically trying to find new trade partners with the Native Americans. Uh, he and his partner are attacked by a Wendigo. It ends up killing his partner. He escapes, makes it to a Native American village. 
they've been having Wendigo troubles. He knows where the Wendigo lives, and he basically bargains, like, if you guys, like, you know, take care of, like, since you guys took care of me, I'll, I'll help you figure out where it is, and yep. I'll help you fight it. Um, I'm not going to go past that, but that's that's the premise of that story. Asylum is Penhurst, um, is our, our what we're basing it on. We'd yep. love to be able to actually shoot at Penhurst. It's right down the road. Yep. Penhurst, we are trying to talk to you. Respond to my emails. We're literally right here. We are right here. <laughs> I worked on the farm next to you. I know a guy who did audio work on World's Biggest Ghost Hunt when it was there. <laughs> Like, it's right there, yeah. man. We're right here. But that one uh, follows the story of there are, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, there's a group of kids who went in, uh, who, like, were ghost hunting back in the early 2000s, and they disappear. Mm. And the, one of the, the first cop to respond basically mm. is like, I saw some stuff in there. Like, mm. something's wrong here. The place is haunted. Something took those kids. It's a failed investigation. He gets scapegoated and it destroys his life. He becomes an alcoholic and everything because he basically got, he gets fired from the force. And um, like two decades later, his kids, uh, or it, was it two of his kids or a kid and the kid's friend? I can't it remember. Was, it was, it was his sons. I think at the very least it was the one son and then his group of friends. Yeah. So they decide that they're going to go and, you know, basically try and vindicate their father. Yeah. And the story goes from there with, of course, the, the asylum there's something in the asylum. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it's paranormal is for you to decide. Correct. Uh, um, and uh, what was... Uh, there was one more that I had. Oh, right. Dryas Key. Yes. So yeah. well, that's that probably like down the line. That's like know. Indiana Jones scale. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's we, a We do not off. have the budget for that. We do not that. have the budget to do Dryas Key right now. But yeah, for those wondering, uh, we will be launching a new YouTube channel that will be featuring all of these short films specifically. Yep. Uh, it's going to be a, a media production company channel. Yeah. Uh, just be for I think narrative we can, purposes. You can tell them what the company is going to be called. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be called uh, Redacted Entertainment. Yep. Or Redacted Media. We haven't yep. settled on the exact, but that's going to yep. be uh, that's going to be the company. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm psyched about it. But yeah, we uh, we sat down and we we planned out the next ten years. Yep. <laughs> so I'm I'm psyched. We got we got to launch a milk brand. I think at this point we do have to have a milk brand. I'm shocked we haven't. Yeah. I, I think. <laughs> Well, we probably need the lodge, and then we need a farm, and then we need cows to provide. Yeah, we, could just, we could work with seven stars. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a local fun. thing. Yeah, why not? Yeah, let's. See. <laughs> what do we even call that? Lore milk. The what? lactose what? lodge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like lactose lodge personally. That'd be fun. Yeah. The lact lodge. Be a narrow. Uh... Narrow narrow market. But... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but, but a passionate one. At the very least, for like Blobfest or something, we should organize. We yeah. should at least like get let them put like labels on it. Yeah, I think yeah. that'd be fun. That'd be, that'd be great. We're also gonna try and do Blobfest every year now, which is a, a big thing here in Phoenixville because the movie The Blob has a scene at the Colonial, mm -hmm. which is a historic theater here. Uh, I know one of the guys who runs it, so we're we're hoping to uh, get some cool stuff there. I would love to screen our movies there too. Oh, a hundred percent. I would be shocked if we couldn't do that. As would I. But uh, so we're gonna have a stand, which means that once a year in July, you will be able to come to Phoenixville and uh, come and hang with us and grab a drink and walk around town. The streets get closed down. There's blobs. It's I, fun. I, I don't really even know how to describe the blob because it's such a simple concept of a horror movie. It's, yeah. There's just a blob and it consumes people. Yep. That's about it. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. It's, from, half, it's the 50s, right? I think so, yeah. yeah half it, the bars have a blob drink. It's great. Yeah. Cat and I got all of them. By the way, half the bars, this is not a normal town. Half the bars is not like three bars. Half the bars is about 11 bars. Yeah. Uh, no, this <laughs> so, is... Yeah. It's over half. Yeah. I think, yeah. It's a packed town for those who like to... Uh, I love it here. ...involve themselves in libations. I love this place so much. That's a great town. Uh, such a ridiculous area it really is oh uh, boy but uh speaking speaking of towns um there's a few of those on malta uh, <laughs> incredible transition <laughs> love it let's go you know me i'm great at transitioning yes um that is that is my skill i uh, anyway for most people mm -hmm. the story of malta starts in 5900 bc mm -hmm. some people come across that's that's where i start my history. Yeah, ex exactly <laughs> Um, you know, for the average person, everyone knows Malta was first populated in 5900 BC. You know it, I know it, we all know it. Yeah, you know it, I know it, everybody knows it. <laughs> um, and the idea is that a bunch of hunter-gatherers, or not hunter-gatherers, early agriculture, mm -hmm. a bunch of people hopped on rafts mm -hmm. with livestock and got over to Malta. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I am curious how they knew Malta was there. Uh, 
That is one thing that I didn't consider when making the video. Now, now that I think about it, I'm like, how the hell did they know Malta was there? I mean, to be fair, somebody may have just, like, found it. It was separated from Sicily for several thousand years by quite a few miles of water. I mean, how many is quite a few? Uh, more than 11. So you wouldn't be able to see it. Well, I mean... Yeah, but you go, when you're going fishing, you're going more than a mile or two out, usually. We're talking about 5900 BC. Yeah. They have boats then, don't they? That's how they travel, right? They didn't even have copper yet. You don't need copper to have boats. Well, well no, but <laughs> like, you get my point. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get we're it. not talking about, like, sea I mean, trade routes. Yeah, they're not using sextants to navigate exactly, or whatever, yeah, or but, compasses. But Malta, because of its location kind of right between Sicily and North Africa, mm -hmm. has for a very long time been both an important trade stop and mm -hmm. also a very important military installation. Mm, yeah. uh, the Knights Hospitaller actually kind of overdid it a little bit with, uh, with how much corsairing they did. Oh. Because they basically had a free license to attack any Arab shipping whatsoever so they were just privateers at that point some of it was fighting pirates okay that was the idea the idea was you guys are gonna fight pirates mm -hmm. they got a little overzealous about how they de they defined pirates as you um, do which you know uh when you're an order of knights on a tiny island in the middle of the mediterranean what else are you gonna do with your time right just pillage i guess exactly it's better than pillaging at least you're only going after ships pillaging ship <laughs> pillaging ships <laughs> Um, but it's this weird story because we have the hunter gatherers get there in 5900 BC mm. and apparently decimate the, the landscape farming, uh, like gets a severe depopulation at one point. Um, mm. yeah. So that first population who comes in is believed to be the population that built these megalithic temples that are on Malta because we're looking at, they'd, they'd been there for about three two three thousand years by the time they start building these things what were the names of them uh the big ones are menagerie gigantia and uh, uh Hagarim is one of the ones that comes up and that's um that's actually one of the later ones and it's one of the simplest ones mm. so there's a weird thing going on on malta where the very biggest temple is the first one like th this is like if we built the notre dame first mm. weird yeah, considering that's kind of like the culmination. Exactly. That's like one of the greatest Gothic cathedrals ever built. It took a long time to build it. There's a cathedral in Spain that is still being built and has been for several hundred years now. Um, really? Yeah. You keep starting and stopping. Why? I think it was a funding issue. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so this is like, you know, if the Romans built the Pantheon first or if the Greeks built the Parthenon first. Mm. It's this weird reversal where either the temples older than Gigantia are gone completely or buried yeah or for some reason they built the first one in the most complex manner possible and then got less complicated now it's possible that they built the first one and went this is cool but it was a little too much work <laughs> yeah, it bit off a little more than we could chew yeah but at the same time <laughs> kind of weird mm -hmm. not usually how these things work so it's kind of in the same classification as gebekli tepe where it's mm -hmm. like this is here why the hell is it here? Yeah. What was it for? We know a little bit more about Gigantia because it has uh, calendar stones that track the phases of the moon. Mm -hmm. So it was clear that they were doing some astronomy there. And yeah. they, they understood. So it's definitely, you know, we can tell that there's something more complex here going on. We can kind of have an idea of why it's there. Gebekli Tepe is less certain. Um, it's definitely astronomically aligned, but we're not totally certain what the purpose was. Uh, okay. Gigantia, we found charred animal bones, charred seeds. So either it was being used for ritual sacrifice or for divination or for feasting. Those are kind of the three big possibilities here. But why the hell is it as old as it is? And why is it the most complicated are the big questions here. And Grant Hancock's explanation is that it's not the oldest. It's just the oldest one above water. Hmm. And the, the concept here would be that Malta, which used to be connected to Sicily over land and cover several kilometers more distance out from the current coastlines, that would have been uh, kind of like the high point. That would have been the, the, the upper atmosphere for mm -hmm. them. Everything else would have been lower in areas that are now 25 meters underwater. So it, the reason that that number, 25 meters, is important, and I think, you know, Graham never says it, and also I want to point out that the only thing I could find that he was definitely talking about is uh, I believe I believe it's pronounced Jebel Joel Bahar, or Jebel Joel Bar. It's the the one that's underwater, hmm. and 
Graham says that it's a temple complex mm -hmm. that's based on the work of a guy named Zeitelmer, who is a nutcase. But him being a nutcase does not mean that this can't be a temple. Um, what made him a nutcase? Uh, he, he's very convinced that Ancient Aliens is real. Ah. Uh. Yeah. I, he, he read Sitchin, which is something you should never do. Actually, I'm not going to say that. I'm saying read Sitchin, but also make sure that you understand that Sitchin did not know what he was talking about and can, is demonstrably wrong. Can you explain in a very brief sure. manner why? I, uh, first of all, there's a website called SitchinIsWrong.com. <laughs> <laughs> that was it is it was written by dr michael heiser who as you guys know is, is someone we're a big fan of yes and heiser is a guy who can read biblical hebrew and was taught to read biblical hebrew studied it sitchin taught himself to read biblical hebrew and uh sumerian cuneiform problem with that is that he he did not get sumerian cuneiform right uh nor did he get um Sitchin is wrong. Uh, Sitchin is an I. S I. Yeah. So just. S I T C H I N is wrong.com. There you go. Uh, nice. uh, so Sitchin's whole thing was the Anunnaki, the planet Nibiru, the 12th. Like he wrote the book, The 12th Planet. And that's mm. what everybody hears and it drives me nuts when I go on YouTube and I see comment sections where it's like, oh, that's Nibiru or this is the Anunnaki. And I'm like, you're. Like, listen, if you said that's the Nephilim from the Bible, okay. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. That's a thing that's in the book. If you said it's angels, if you said it was the gods, sure. The Anunnaki are a specifically different thing where we're talking about something akin to Nephilim mm -hmm. in the sense that Nephilim are the descendants of angels and men. If that's your take on Nephilim, which is not universal, that mm -hmm. is a topic of debate. Mm -hmm. So Sitchin basically takes that, leans all the way to it, says that not only not only were the Anunnaki the, the gods, but they were also aliens from a planet called Nibiru. They came to Earth and seeded the human population because they needed gold. Why? Something to do with the destruction of their home planet's atmosphere, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I, I have not read Sitchin's work in a while, but that is the gist. The idea is that we were like a slave race. Oh, fun. Now, listen, is it great fiction? No, it's great fiction. That is, like, that is such a fun story. That is Stargate, basically. Yeah. Like, but the problem is that it's... It, I, I actually wouldn't be shocked if Stargate was written by people who read Sitchin. <laughs> and when... This is great fiction. Uh, <laughs> and then made Stargate. Fair. Also, I, I think we should watch Stargate. Have you seen the movie? No. Movie's good. They decided to make a TV show spinoff, mm -hmm. but... Obviously, you can't get A-list actors to do a TV show spinoff. Yeah. So all of the actors from the original are not the actors in the TV series, and that was jarring for me. <laughs> um, but it was a really great, a really fun movie. Um, the, the aliens in it are basically very advanced humans from another, another like, part of the universe. Oh, it's Kurt Russell, James Spader. Yeah, when I said that it, they had A-list actors, I meant it. Like, it was a big, big movie. Um, great movie. It, it's kind of like Starship Troopers. Oh, Roland Emmerich directed it. No wonder why. It's, yeah. it's got to be great. Yeah, it's it's like Starship Troopers. It's that kind of thing. We're like, it. is it a little cheesy because it was made in the 90s? Yeah. Yeah, but 90s cheesy is kind of fun. You know? Yeah, like, absolutely. Like The Thing, Escape from New York, those are both 80s, but like that period of like the late 80s into the 90s, we had all of these now, movies I'm that speed, were campy but good. Uh, speed, The Matrix, Independence Day, uh, uh, where they were like, CGI is really cool, but maybe they shouldn't have been like, CGI is really cool quite yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they did it right. They used it sparingly. George, George, why'd you make the Death Star CGI? It's how it was originally intended. <laughs> Don't think it was. <laughs> like, Spaceballs looks better than the digital re remake of yeah. Star Wars. And that's not a joke. Um, Disney has the, the 1997 edition, right? I think so. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. I want to get some... I need to get some VHS OG Star Wars tapes now that I can afford them. Yep. Uh, isn't that funny? That, isn't that funny? That VHS is now, like, pricey. Yep. You know what I will never forgive my stepfather for, Christian, if you're watching this? 
Remember when we had those three 1980s Indiana Jones VHS tapes that I wanted to keep? I'm Remember not, that, Christian? I'm not a part of this. <laughs> and you told me they were going to be worthless. Uh, no touchy that pile. <laughs> but it's fine. They would have been worth like 50 bucks max. Fair. But still, it would have been cool to have, you know? I would have put those on a shelf and but, never watched them. But it would have been <laughs> priceless in your heart. Exactly. Also, I went and watched rewatching Indiana Jones uh, when I was a senior in college mm -hmm. over Thanksgiving. Yeah, just phenomenal movies. Oh yeah, all, all three. Yeah, they're the all best three. trilogy ever. Yep. Mm -hmm. Star Wars, great series of six movies. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, incredible saga. It's a shame they never trilogy. made any sequels. I know. Um, that was that was really disappointing. I was hoping for more Star Wars. Would have been cool to see another three. You know, like. Luke Skywalker adventure. Yeah. Or, oh my god, if we could add Luke Skywalker, Mara Jade. Yeah. And instead they just didn't make any movies. No. Nope. Mm, nope. It's unfortunate. What was the what was the book series? Heir to the Empire? No, no, no. The one it was the the, the, the Thrawn trilogy, right? Yeah, that's Heir to the Empire. Oh yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. Uh which apparently read. is making it into canon now. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. Uh the Ahsoka the Ahsoka series has oh, Thrawn in it. Oh cool. And and this is I'm so like I know we are so deeply off topic right now, but Shockingly, you know what? Is but... is this ever on topic? No. I think it's, 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 we we talked about Grand Hancock. You, uh, you you watch the Friday videos to be <laughs> on topic. You watch this for the chaos. Exactly. This is for the relatively organized chaos. Listen, we're still sort of connected. Yeah. We're talking about fiction here entirely for the most part because Graham was completely wrong about Malta and I'm not afraid to say that. We're in the solar system. Um, like, to, to quickly go back to it, the I, I recommend watching the Friday video for the exact details of this, but Jebel Joel Bahar, which is how we got onto the Stargate topic, um, it's about 19 meters underwater. Graham mm -hmm. says 25 meters underwater. I think the reason Graham says 25 meters is because he acknowledges in the show on numerous occasions that during Meltwater Pulse 1B there was that very fast 25 meter sea level rise that we mentioned when mm. we talked about Meltwater Pulse 1B. Yeah. Um, which means that it would put Jebel Joel Bahar right where it needs to be. Otherwise, it's not underwater fast enough. Mm. It's still above ground. Now, maybe people back then would have been like, hmm, that might happen again and built further up. Yeah. Possible. The Egyptians sure didn't. <laughs> um, they kept building right next to the Nile, knowing it would flood. Uh, <laughs> every year that comes up too because of Sirius the dog star mm. um yeah so the problem is with with Zeitelmere he he cites Sitchin and then Hancock isn't citing Zeitelmere but he seems to be talking about the same thing as Zeitelmere mm. Zeitelmere describes a 900 by 500 foot plateau underwater rectangular mm. with I think it was three rings of rocks mm -hmm. that were I think about 9 to 11 meters in diameter mm -hmm. and 6 to 10 meters high. Mm -hmm. And he said, this was a temple complex. Said that in the, the 90s? Early 2000s? Uh, 2015, a guy named Ruben Grima, who is very high up in, in Maltese academia, goes out to the site, and I don't know if he dived it. I don't know if they did a scan or what, because I cannot for the life of me find the document he supposedly wrote about it. Mm. Wikipedia cites his, his professional opinion, but that is cited nowhere. I can't find it. I can. I looked up professional opinion on Jebel Joel Bahar, Ruben Grima. Nothing came up on JSTOR. Nothing came up through the Westchester University Library System. Nothing came up on ResearchGate. Nothing. Interesting. And that's weird, because usually Wikipedia does not allow citations that don't link somewhere. Yeah. Like... It's either got to be ISBN number, it's got to have a link to it, to an archive post, to a JSTOR article, like something like that. Nothing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so the point I made in the video was, all this guy said, the only publicly available info on why Jebel Joel Bahar is not a temple complex, according to the archaeological community, is a line where he said, I'm unconvinced. Incredible. It didn't really explain what the survey process was. Mm -hmm. And now you've got me who's like, do I learn to scuba dive? Because uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm terrified of scuba diving. There's a scuba school over in Melbourne. Yeah. I, I want to get it. I want to get certified. You can go. I'll pay. Sure. <laughs> Let's do it. We'll go to Malta. You go scuba diving. I will go look at castles. There we go. I'll uh, take the camera down. I'll get it all. Hopefully <laughs> I don't get attacked by a shark down there. Hopefully. Reference. Um... Yeah, I do. I do really want to go to Malta, though. I think. It, oh yeah. If we can get, if we can get one of those trip companies that sponsors like Mini Minuteman and Stakuyi, 
if any of you are watching, you know. We have plans. And our channel is about the same size as, as Takuyi. Uh, <laughs> is it really? Uh, as as his History of Everything podcast channel. Yeah, we're still smaller than his gaming channel. Got it. Um, but yeah, it's I love I love watching the homies succeed. <laughs> it's great. Everybody's, nothing better. Everybody's doing good. Um, it's all we can hope for. Yeah, so I... Uh, I would love to be able to go do that. There's a few trips I already have listed that I'm like, I want to go and I want to do um, the uh, the Celtic countries. I want to do Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and Brittany, mm. I want, which is obviously not a country in and of itself, but it is the only, it's one of the only places on the world in the world where a Celtic language is still spoken widely. Yep. Um, I want to do uh, Norway and Sweden to talk about Vikings, um, which I would love to do with Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, but it's a long trip. That's a long trip, and also I can talk about the Viking Age in Britain while we're in Norway. True. Um, so I want to do the Celtic countries, I want to do the Norse countries, I want to do Mycenaean sites in Greece, mm. um, just because I think they're cool, yeah. and I want to do Malta. Those are like my big four right now. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we can uh, that we can do one of those within the next couple of years. That'd be great. Um, the big problem is that I am terrified of flying across the ocean. Oh, yeah. So you might have to like inject me with Valium or something. Would you rather a boat? No. Well, those are your options. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get some Valium syringes, All right. and you're just gonna keep me knocked out the entire time we're flying. All right, uh, <laughs> that's how we're gonna do it. Anytime you start to be able to throw a sentence together, I'll know exactly. You know, <laughs> Dude, when I when I was flying to um to DC, so I could go to Knoxville. Yeah. Uh, for that that documentary shoot, mm -hmm. I I got to the Philadelphia airport and I I had like six drinks. Really, I was not getting on that plane sober. What is it about? Fly I'm, I'm, you've been to, like, I'm not this afraid of flying. Time. I'm afraid of crashing. Fair. It's it's the sudden stop at the end. You know. Uh, <laughs> Fair. It's I, more than anything. I think it's just like I, I'm. I know that I'm far more likely to die in a car crash, mm -hmm. and I get in my car and I drive every day. Yeah. But you're the one driving. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the other thing is, I don't I don't think I'd like being a pilot either. <laughs> no. That would not be fun. Well, the, um, the biggest downside about being a pilot is that if something goes wrong, you can't just pull over to the side of the road. Exactly. And it's it's kind of frowned upon to parachute out of the plane while everybody else is still in it. Correct. Yeah, commercial pilot dipping before the passengers would not be yeah. the best move. Maybe we should just equip airliners with like really big parachutes. Have we thought? Has anybody thought about that? I think, and I don't think it'll work. Fuck you, stupid bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Space. Space is a lot higher than commercial airliners fly. It's the final frontier. Except the ocean is vastly scarier to me. And here I am getting ready to play yeah. a deep sea fishing trip. <laughs> in space, no one can hear you scream. In the ocean, all they're going to hear <laughs> if they're listening. <laughs> exactly. I, listen, for some reason, I've seen Apollo 13 far less terrifying to me than just the idea of those people in that sub. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, I gotta say, the story they originally gave us that the sub imploded instantaneously, they all died without realizing anything was even wrong, like their brains didn't have time to process it because it happened that fast. Mm -hmm. I was fine with that. Yeah. I felt comfortable. I was at peace. I was like, you know what? At least their families, you know, you know I know a lot of people are like, they're billionaires, I don't care. But I, they're, they're still, still people. people. Yeah. Uh, like, and especially the 19-year-old kid who was just trying to make his dad happy. Yeah. Like, and the French, like, the, the former French submariner who was on there, who I don't think was even a billionaire, I think he was just invited to go along. Mm. There's, like, three billionaires and then the CEO. Mm. Like, and then the, 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 there was only two billionaires, the kid, the pilot, the, the submariner, and the CEO, yeah. Um, now, granted, I, when I did a little more research, I found out that that sub model only made it to death 13 of 90 tries. Yeah. How is that approvable? It wasn't. It was an experimental vessel. Yeah, but anyway, I was happy in the knowledge that they all died instantly. Because mm -hmm. you know what, if you're gonna if you're gonna die, it's the way to go. There's, I still think I would prefer to go surrounded by friends and family. Yeah, I mean, you know, in old age when I can see, you know, in front of me that yes, I succeeded, I passed mm -hmm. everything on. Like my my grandchildren are healthy and happy. Like that's how I want to die, the way my grandfather did. Yeah. You know, like yeah, that that man died 
well. Yeah. Like, with his, surrounded by his kids, mm. with everybody else at Christmas dinner. Yeah. Like, together. Yeah. Um, which is, I'm actually grateful to my grandfather for dying on Christmas. <laughs> really? Yeah. I fully, fully believe that was on purpose. Really? He knew he was gonna die. He had cancer. He knew, mm. he knew it was terminal. And, like, I'd, I'd said to my mom a couple weeks before he died, I was like, he's going to hold out till Christmas. She was like, I, I know you want to think that, but I, I don't think he's going to make it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, he's going to hold out till Christmas. The man died at like 7.30 p.m. on Christmas Day. Really? While our entire extended family was at my Aunt Cindy's, except for my mom and her siblings, mm -hmm. who were all at his bedside. Mm -hmm. The rest of us, it was the one time of the year we could feasibly all be in the same place, and we mm -hmm. were. Yeah. Like... And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, he was already up there. Yeah. He was already up there, like, hold on. Okay, now. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was right after we finished dinner. Really? Yes. Like, He's like, give me this. Give I'm me like, this. damn it, pop up. <laughs> you sly son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a baller move. I know. Like, he was a great man. Um, I, I am so proud to have had that man as a grandfather. Um, but uh, what was I talking about? You were talking about the sub update, right? Which yeah. I wasn't aware there was an update. There was an update, but that's uh, that's that's how we got here. This is why I have you. <laughs> um, my my ADD just takes me places, and you bring me back. Exactly. Um, there was an update, mm -hmm. which was that in fact the sub lost power, but did not immediately implode, which means that it just sank like a rock for about forty-five to ninety seconds before collapsing. <laughs> So, just so they knew they were going to die for, almost, terror, for yeah. almost a minute to a little over a minute. And they would have been all like squished because of the way that, because of how fast it was falling. Mm -hmm. And then it imploded. And I'm like, did their families need to know that? No. No. Like, the, the, the Jeff Goldblum line from Jurassic Park rings more and more true every time scientists talk. <laughs> like... You were so busy trying to figure out whether or not you could, you didn't stop to think about whether or not you should. Yep. The, Which is how I feel about everything related to AI right now. Yeah. Um, I like how James Cameron was like, I warned you guys in 1984 mm -hmm. and nobody listened to me. And I'm like, you yep. know what? James Cameron, good director, kind of a weenie. Um, but like... I don't know. He's gone down to the Titanic multiple times, and yeah, but he he's, he made the term he made Terminator and he made Avatar, and then he was like, oh, "I'm not putting guns in my movies anymore. I don't want to glorify violence." Like my brother in Christ, you are the violence. <laughs> Have you seen the movies you made? Like, yeah, that's a good point. You don't get to repent now. Go whole hog. <laughs> <laughs> in man yeah is more violence <laughs> make it make it so so past the realm of reasonability that everybody's like okay maybe we should tone down the violence i mean yeah that's it if you want to make change exactly be the change you want to see exactly. in the world exactly see james you you need young people on your staff we just get it um i, I you know what you should do you should you should make call of duty warzone the movie <laughs> That would be an incredible movie. It would be an incredible movie. Uh, unfortunately, you could not have... The uh, original cast. Well, well, no, it's more that you, you could not have realistic dialogue. Do you ever play that game with Prox Shadow? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good lord! Yeah, or like ever speak to someone in the military. It's the number of times I have been called a slur. <laughs> Just any given slur in that game. Yeah. Um, most of the times after killing somebody. Yeah. yeah I, I love Deathcoms. Deathcoms is a great concept. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, um, the whole sub thing, let's just not, is my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. We have robots that can do that. There's no reason for us to do it. I mean, if you want to, like, do your thing, man, but... But also, like, maybe next time we all agree that, like, if you go down in the experimental sub and, and lose contact, like, we're not spending half a million dollars to go rescue you. Should that, should that be on the new waiver the next the next rendition of yeah the exactly i think like i get it this time like it was the right thing to do mm -hmm. but next time somebody wants to bring an experimental carbon fiber sub down to twelve thousand feet mm -hmm. maybe maybe there should be something on the waiver that's like we'll send a sub down to look for your remains and that's about it because i think that would discourage people from making really stupid decisions that cost me my tax money mm, sure yeah yeah. See, we are very fair and balanced here. We're like, billionaires are people too. 
Also, that was stupid. Yep. Like, yeah, see? This is not a political show. No. This is a show that makes fun of politics. Correct. Uh, Everyone's wrong. Yeah. Including the archaeological community and Graham Hancock. Wait, let's <laughs> weave it right back in. <laughs> Love it. And I say that because Graham Hancock brings on a woman who seems very nice. Her name is Lenny Rejic. She has no academically peer-reviewed work whatsoever and a single book that came out in 2018 called Sirius the Dog Star which cites research that is not current hmm. um, she basically goes back to like she keeps citing stuff from the 90s and the early 2000s a lot of the work on these uh, these temples to be fair there was kind of a gap in, in any breakthroughs they found a whole bunch of stuff in the 19 in like 1918 and then again the 1920s hmm. again in the 1950s again in the 1990s so you had a few breakthrough stages where they were like, this is really cool stuff. And then up to 2002, at least, uh, a guy named David Trump, an archaeologist, says, yeah, there's uh, there's not a ton of carbon datable samples from these sites. And like seven years later, they started carbon dating a lot more stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now we have about 155 usable samples mm -hmm. from these temple complexes, which is still sounds like a small sample size. I'm not an archaeologist. I don't know if that is a small sample size. The sample size specifically for Gigantia is is like four, oh, really? which is just tiny. It's yeah. like a couple of seeds and a couple of bones. Mm -hmm. um, so that one, not as convincing as the other ones that have a lot more samples. But still, there's only one layer of deposition there. So there's no evidence of a previous civilization. This is something that Graham gets wrong a lot, but I'll get back to that in a second after we talk about Lenny. Mm -hmm. Lenny went back and used software to look at the last time that the star Sirius was visible in the night sky from Malta. There was a period where it wasn't, from about 14,000 years ago to about 11,000 years ago. Then it reappears. And Graham's argument is basically, well, before that is, you know, nothing happened. Now what he goes on to say later in the series is basically the reason that all of the temples were tracking Sirius, that's what he believes, is that they all basically point some direction south. Hmm. His belief is that the reason they do that is that Sirius was in the sky when some sort of cataclysm happened. Whatever meteor shower he thinks came that caused the uh, Meltwater Pulse 1D flooding. He gets that much later in the series, and he has some good evidence for some stuff, um, some of the stuff in the show is actually completely geologically and archaeologically sound. Hmm. And that's smart, because it allows him to kind of be like, see, I'm not totally disagreeing. Hmm. Um, but I really did, like, I, and, and a lot of people are going to shit on us for this episode, but it was such a, a weak episode. It almost felt like it was never supposed to be in the show in the first place, and he, he was asked to do, like, a certain number of episodes and had to squeeze this in. Got it. Because you watch it, and it's just, it's... The stuff he cites is really weak, and there's not a ton of footage of some of the things that he talks about extensively. It's just frustrating. Um, so, but, but what Lenny did was she tracked the movement of the stars, and she found that at some point in the last 11,000 years, Sirius has been visible from all temples except for Menaja, which is aligned to the, uh, the sun. So the sun goes perfectly through the doorway, mm. excuse me, on the equinoxes, and then on the solstices, it hits one of the two stones that stand inside. Mm. So it's cool. Yeah. Really cool. Oh, yeah. The rest of them just face south in some manner. She says it's because of Sirius. And then Graham goes on to say, well, it's because of Sirius, because Sirius is associated with a bunch of other things, like the Egyptian goddess Isis. I said Isis in the last one, and apparently that's wrong. Um, I always heard it Isis. Really? Growing up. Yeah. I always heard it Isis. Um, I just figured I was wrong. So. I, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I heard it as as Isis growing up. Apparently, it's Isis or is it or Isis or something like Isis or I, yeah. There's I don't I'm not Egyptian. <laughs> um, but it's like the star was associated with Isis mm -hmm. or Isis, and yeah. then of course uh, Isis and Osiris are consorts. Mm -hmm. Consort basically means that they were a couple. Um, weird times for but we, weird words for like royalty and everything because <laughs> they can't just use normal words um they're also brother and sister oh yeah thanks egypt um egypt did a lot of incest man 
Like, so much incest that when the Greeks conquered Egypt, they were like, yo, let's do incest too. It's just the thing to do here. Yeah. Really? In the royal family, yeah. Uh, is that where England and France and all them got it from? N no. They got it from the same kind of idea, though. Okay. But they were like... With with Egypt, it was kind of specifically the, the, the ruling dynasty. Mm -hmm. With Europe and most other places throughout history... It's been the ruling class, mm. either within a country, so you're looking at, like, the king would have his daughter marry a, a very powerful noble. Mm. Like, a very powerful noble woman would marry the prince, or something like that, and you'd secure alliances that way. You get into the Victorian era, and, like, you know, early modern Europe, that's when you start to see a lot of this intermarriage, uh, like, within families. So, you get, like, the Habsburgs, who were one of the worst examples the English were not as bad, mm -hmm. so there, it kind of goes around. Um, it, it was varying degrees of bad. But so you would have ruling family marrying daughter from other ruling family. Mm -hmm. So at first, that's a diverse gene pool. When you keep doing that within like a total of a couple dozen royal families over the course of generations, you end up marrying your cousins a lot. Um, also, I, I do want to really quickly say one thing, because this came up uh, in a TikTok I made ages ago, like 2021. Somebody was like, people with blue eyes are products of incest. And it's like, first of all, almost all genetic mutations are products of incest. Um, like, just the way it is. Also, everyone's a product of incest if you go back far enough. Yeah. Because at one point, there were not that many of us. Mm -hmm. And it's 100% certain that somebody in your family... W Somewhere back, you have ancestors who were at least cousins. Hmm. Like, not good today. Bad plan. But mm -hmm. when you're in a population that's a total of 50 people in your entire tribe, it's going to happen. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's actually worse for us now than it was back then. But the reason I bring that up is uh, just because we, we are on this topic. But a lot of people, you know, kind of throw that word around as a way to make fun of different regions and different areas. Obviously, we make fun of Alabama all the time. I don't think Alabama is even the incest capital of the country. I think it's Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, yes, Kat. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize we had an incest capital of the country. It would I be mean, better if we didn't. To be fair, I'm sure every country has a capital. We just don't draw attention to that because... Well, we probably right. should. We probably should, yeah. yeah. But uh, it gets thrown around a lot um, because, for example, like uh, Pakistan and mm -hmm. Afghanistan have pretty big problems with incest with oh, know, really? cousins for the most part first mm -hmm. cousins because that's that's permissible um in in Islam but <laughs> I did see a, a TikTok from a guy who's like flying into the wedding and then suddenly realizing yeah. it's yours <laughs> mm -hmm. so they have arranged marriages still yeah. sometimes I'm not saying this is universal mm -hmm. but in Islam it's permissible to marry your first cousin mm -hmm. Christianity first cousin is out it's second cousin and onward is, yeah. is okay um, and that was a, a, literally a medical decision made by the Catholic Church. A lot of people don't realize that in the early medieval period, the Catholic Church was actually the only people doing medicine. The Catholics did something good. Yes. Um, well done. Yeah. I, we, 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 we hate on the Catholics a lot, mm -hmm. but they have made reasonable contributions in the past. Considering I was raised Catholic, I'm, yeah. I'm glad we got one back. <laughs> well, it's one of those things where, like, it, it, no group of people is wholly good or evil. Mm-hmm. Most groups of people are not wholly good or evil. Good, good. Uh, yeah. So nice little asterisk. Yeah, I'm thinking about I'm like, okay, maybe there's a few. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe there's a few bad ones out there. Um, but the uh, so so you have this this everywhere. But the thing is, it's it's not any one race, any one religion, any one locality. I believe uh, in Europe, it's France mm. has the highest rates of incest. Which, when you think about the French makes complete sense mm -hmm. because I'm pretty sure the French will just shag anything that moves. Um, I could not think of an, Amer an American English slang term that was not vulgar there. I just gotta say, I loved the fact that shag was what you came up with. For though. some reason, I went to British English. Incredible. Yeah, I should have said just that one word. Were you watching Austin thing. Powers recently? I have no idea how we got to shag. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's getting clipped. Oh, yeah. Oh, god damn it. Incredible show so far today. This is oh, going so well. Oh, yeah. 
This is why we don't drink during the show, is it would be so much worse than this. Or oh, yeah. so much better is also a possibility. Fair. Maybe we should. Maybe I'm... every Lore Lounge podcast should or Lore Lodge podcast should just be Lore Lounge at this point. <laughs> Might be more fun for everybody involved, to be honest. Valid. Um whew. except sometimes we talk about serious topics and we shouldn't get silly when we do that. Yeah. Uh, lore Lodge, Lore Lounge, two separate things. Yeah, yeah. Um maybe when it's not a serious topic. Yeah. Yeah. Like Tartaria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the reason i brought this up was to say that a lot of people use uh these incest statistics and these stories of incest as as a way to lob like racial issues back and forth mm -hmm. it happens everywhere yeah. no matter what your skin color no matter what your religion there there is somewhere in every country that has an incest problem it's not good it's not yeah. a good thing there's a there's a reason we associate it with the word problem yeah but you know that was that was one thing that i saw a lot of and it's just Listen, guys, your your genetics define a few things about you. They don't define your character, and that's all that matters. Um, right. You know, just wanted to put that out there. Uh, some guy had a dream back in the 60s, you know? Yeah. I mean, what was his name? I feel like he was important. Yeah, was, was, uh, there's a lot of, like, roads named after him now. Yeah, We've got like a King. day for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for the record, we're not making fun of Martin Luther King. No, <laughs> we're, we're revering him. Yes, a uh, very important man. Um, I actually have, like, despite the fact that I disagree with him on almost everything, I do have a lot of respect for Malcolm X as a historical figure. What do you disagree with him on? Just to Well, he was a communist. He was also a black supremacist. Um, uh, or at least a black nationalist. Um, I don't know if he was a supremacist, but he was a black nationalist. He was a communist. Uh, what is black? I think he was a Muslim, um, which, like, is more of a theological disagreement than a, like, I don't think that's a bad part of his character. I just am like, I disagree with that. Yeah. Because I'm not one. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> But, uh, no, it's just, like, the, you know, the willingness to stand out and say, basically just be honest about things and not sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. um, good foil to, to Martin Luther King, obviously, who was very much, you know, peace. I think that when, when it comes to the government and comes to change, they have violence. There needs to be a threat of violence. Yeah. The, uh, if, you know, it's the Black Panthers, for all of my disagreements with them, were an important group of people. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would not say the same thing about groups like the KKK. Uh, no. <laughs> You were just weenies. Yep. Like intent matters, and you yeah. guys suck. <laughs> Imagine calling yourself a knight, and you're running around and like a like dressed like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did anybody ever take them? Ooh, seriously? spooky. Yeah. Well, because they would kill people. Well, um, yeah, no, there's yeah. that, but like just in terms of the dress, like how did nobody realize? You know what? If, if we wanted to even be remotely taken seriously, not that you ever would, considering your beliefs. It's but, like you're wearing yeah. a dunce cap, dude. Yeah. What? <laughs> you're wearing a giant dunce cap. You're literally letting your clothing speak for yourself. <laughs> A bunch of douchebags. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, we're gonna put this wooden cross in the ground and burn it. That'll scare them. Yeah. Like, God, who are your fathers? Um, probably Civil War soldiers on the wrong side. Yeah, probably bad people. <laughs> but also, like, when I see a Confederate flag in Central Pennsylvania, I'm like, bro, you're you were on the winning side and you're yeah. still flying the flag of the losing side. Yeah. Like, you were above the line. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> there are people who fly Confederate flags in Canada. <laughs> That's just shocking. Bro, why? We saw one at NASCAR. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was in Pelton. Deeply unsurprising. It's NASCAR. But it wasn't just the flag. On the flag, it said, keep it flying. Listen, like I said, I'm not going to make fun of anybody for being a product of incest. That's not their fault. But if you do fly a Confederate flag, I'm making assumptions. Uh, <laughs> if you're above the Mason-Dixon and you're flying a Confederate flag, I'm making assumptions about you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Several. Yes, and none of them are good. Keep in mind, you bought it. You flew it. There were points where you could make a different choice. <laughs> you you got in your car. You put the keys in the ignition. Yep. You drove to the store. Mm -hmm. You picked out the flag. You put it onto the counter. How is there not shame there? At no point did you think there's a better thing I could spend twenty bucks on. Yeah, like you could have, you could got some, you could have gotten some waffles. It's hard earned money. Like, go to Denny's. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> a waffle house. Yeah, not up here, obviously. Yeah, but like, unfortunately. Um, we do have we do have waffle house up here. Really? There is not one within forty minutes of us. You know where they are? Where? The Delaware border, Mason Dixon line, mm. and Lehigh Valley. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Those are the nearest Waffle Houses. You know where the nearest Sonic is? Like five minutes away, probably. I have no idea. I've never seen one in person. No, they're, they're, really? they're around. They're, there's ones that are close. I've seen a couple. Where? 
Also, for the record, I did not. I never went to a Taco Bell till I was fourteen. I've been once, and that's that was easy. enough. D- d- that was enough. Yeah. What happened to you at Taco Bell? <laughs> I just wasn't impressed. What did you get? I think I got like a taco. Ah, dude, you don't get <laughs> it's Taco. Bell. Do you go to El Burrito and get a taco? Okay, I guess it is called El Burrito. That's yeah. Not... <laughs> Come on. I understand, but it's like you know, you're going to the store and being like, I ordered a water and I wasn't impressed. Well, what do you get at Taco Bell? A crunch wrap or a chalupa or a gordita. All right. Well, apparently I you wasn't. You don't go to Taco Bell people. and make health conscious choices. <laughs> You go to Taco Bell and you make the worst decision of your life knowing full well that your entire digestive system is going to be ripped to shreds for the next 16 hours. Dude, I can't even eat Campbell's anymore without my digestive system being ripped to shreds. That's a valid point. I have not been feeling good all day and I eat perfectly normal things now. Right. Like, I cook for myself. What's up with that? I don't know. Oh, I did have Wawa last night, which after a while of not having Wawa, my stomach was probably like, dude, what is in me? Isn't it weird how, like, you eat healthy for, like, a few weeks and all of a sudden your body, like, rejects anything mm-hmm. that isn't just normal food? I get sick if I eat McDonald's. Yeah. Which sucks, because I love McDonald's. It tastes great going down. Yeah. Doesn't stay down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, sorry. I literally cut out fast food, aside from, you know, when it's a necessity. Mm-hmm. Like, when I literally have no time to cook or order anything else. Yeah. Um, I've lost almost 25 pounds since i did that impressive food is bad for you yeah like american food processed american food is not good like well it's because you they they we need to put the laurel lodge cookbook out just to improve the, yes. the health of our friends yes who, who watch the show well because um, there's no portion control anyway no like, because we, they design these meals as if we're running a marathon mm-hmm. every day. But the thing is, you don't even need to use the crappy ingredients that's in everything to, like, to make tasty food. I think my cheeseburgers taste better than McDonald's. A hundred percent. I'd Honestly, I'd, I'd challenge five guys. The venison burgers with the venison Ooh. you brought down was fantastic. We make good venison burgers. Good. Yeah. yeah. Although with venison, you need to either mix in a little bit of ground beef... Mm-hmm. Or you need to uh, it's too lean. add in some, like, tallow or some butter or something yeah. like that. I think we should, next time we do it, we should mm-hmm. use tallow. Yeah. Um, I've never used tallow, so. It's if it's just straight fat. Oh, really? So you just work it in. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just rendered fat. And you just mix it into your meat. And hmm. so we can take, you know, venison, which is going to be, like, 95% lean, and turn it into an 80% lean. You know what I've never had, but I feel like if I tried it now, it'd probably kill me? What? Spam. You can make pretty delicious meals with Spam. Really? Yeah. I know it's huge in Hawaii. You can. Like it was. You can do it. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with something. Yeah. We should have a Lore Lodge cookbook for when times are good and a Lore Lodge cookbook for when times are not good. Yes. <laughs> the, the Lore Lodge. The Lore Lodge guide to the end days. Yeah. The Lore Lodge 45 time and the Lore Lodge 9 millimeter time. <laughs> I yelled at him. I yelled at him last night. Yeah. Well, we won't go into that. Oh boy! Oh. <laughs> Granted, I get I was mercilessly mocked last time I went shooting. Yeah. Because I have a forty cal. Yeah. For my handgun. Yeah. And my friends were all like, "What are you a fed?" <laughs> Come on, guys. I like the way the gun felt. <laughs> Good weight. So I'm uh, probably gonna sell my forty and go get a nine mil. Uh, <clears throat> um, <laughs> partially because, to be honest, it's so thick. It's a thick boy. Yeah. It's not a good carry. The 40 double stack is just like... It's, it's chonky. Yeah. Yeah. My, that's what mine is. Yeah. No, I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Um, I do kind of want one of the Modern Warfare style, like, 60 round uh, AR-15 mags. Just because just I think it would be funny. Are they, just, are they just beefy? They're just beefy. Okay. Yeah, they're just beefy boys. <laughs> um, It's, you know, do I need one? Absolutely not. There, I can think of no situation where that is going to be beneficial to me in real life. Nope. Like... I don't think people realize how heavy a fully loaded magazine is. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. Yep. Uh, so, you know, when you're when you're out there, you don't need... Especially because you got to carry those things yeah. um, on your chest. Uh, I, I'm buying some plates. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got the buddy hooked me up with some level fours. Nice. Um, speaking of which, we have a shirt that says those level four plates. <laughs> Over on Unqualified, which I have to purchase the domain name for again uh, oh really yeah apparently i lost it Ugh. um but you know maybe we'll just rebrand it under lore lodge and i'll just take out the a few of the shirts <laughs> i say we just anything that gets us on a list <laughs> i think we should keep it as unqualified and just keep it unaffiliated 
fine. Unaffiliated apparel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's it unaffiliated with? The Lore Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that could be a shirt. Unaffiliated apparel. By the Lore Lodge. By the Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're having a lot of good ideas tonight. We really are. And a number of bad ones. <laughs> yep. Anyway, it's super chat time. Yep. We could have talked about the episode, but honestly, I, I said everything I needed to say on Friday, and it was more fun to make jokes about Stargate. I agree. Go, and plus, go watch the video, because most of you haven't. Yeah, that video is not doing well, so I kind of want to encourage everybody to go watch it. <laughs> the, the algorithm is not happy with us the last couple weeks. We no. did a video on MMIW, and it was like, how dare you bring attention to a legitimate issue? Oh yeah, to those of you who commented that on the video, is like, why are you doing this? It's boring. Somebody said nobody cares, and I'm like, yeah. that's why we did it. Yeah, because people should care. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, Geese, all of you. Yeah, yeah. It's child trafficking next week. Have fun, boys. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dark month here at the Lord Lodge. Yeah. <laughs> Kellen for 223 said, you fed for packing a 40 Smith & Wesson. Valid. Well, you're getting called a fed by a fed? Yep. What is that? Is that... Fedception? I guess. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, jumping over to Super Chats, Chris Chan for $5 says, Have you ever heard of the Goblin of Akron, Ohio, known as the Cryax? The Goblin has a shiny Cryax? head with long, stringy hair and has attacked people. It sounds like Gollum. But I get... Put it on the sheet. Put it on the sheet. Put it on the sheet. I'll, uh, I'll yeah, we'll put it there, yeah. Uh, Briley B for five dollars says, "Good morning or good evening, Aiden's. Glad to be seeing another one of the lives once again. I look forward to it every week and love the new backdrop. Oh, Thanks thank so you. much. And uh, thank you to Cap for coming on back out. Who did it? Say hi. Oh, Come say hi again. Uh, yeah, she put this together. <laughs> thank you guys. She did a great job. <laughs> the amount of times we've hit that today and the fact that it's still up there is shocking. Yeah, really. it's it's really incredible. Yeah. It's it's held up by there by double sided tape right now. Yeah, We're going to get a command hook for it, but for now it's I'm just impressed. Yeah, it's impressive. Going to have some shelves back there, there's going to be some books. Yeah. You're going to be able to what, he had a great idea which was to take all the books that we've used to research stuff and put them on a shelf back here. Yeah. So you'll be able to see the spines. Yeah. I think um, it'll be fun. Uh Senchi for $5 and 2 cents. Love it. Uh, did the PA Grand Canyon hike over the weekend? Would recommend. Did not know we had a Grand Canyon we here. We do. Is it where, I know that's out like central PA. Where is that? Because uh, that'd be fun to check out. Dice for 50 DKK, which I'm not sure which currency that is, but that is uh, Danish kroner? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, stop thinking of it as the Custer and start thinking of it as the McCollum. Dude, I am not a... Anything that happened after 1776 is totally out of there for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sorry, like, seven, either. like 1783, I guess. Fair enough. Uh, Modern Valkyrie 84... Yeah, let us know who McCollum is, or we could look him up, I guess. Uh, Modern Valkyrie 84 for Canadian $6.99. Love it. Again, I say I'll help you debate yes. him. Yes, so if, if it's just him, then I don't want to double-team the guy. But if it if he brings on um, sports term sports reference sports term I I still just want context. For what? What's the debate? Oh, about uh, underground rope. Oh, yeah. got it, got it. Um, yeah. I, I if it's just him, then I don't want to pile onto him and have you know, like because obviously you can sit here and look stuff up. Um, yes. like I don't want to have it be me, my version of Jamie, um, <laughs> and then another person. But uh, I probably will will bring up some uh, some various testimonies anonymously that I've mm. that I've seen yeah. that I've received um, yeah. as a way to be like I have people who say that this happened to them. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we do manage to get Damien uh, more on here also, then I might I might be willing to bring on some uh, some help and have Eaton just kind of be a, a producer. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Scarlett Eddards for four ninety nine says, I'm the one making the beaded Lore Lodge sign on Insta. Ooh. I'm moving to PA next spring and want to give it to y'all at Blobfest. Well, thank you. We will let do. you know exactly where we are. Yeah. We'll have a banner and everything. I mean, if you walk down Bridge Street, you'll find us. Yeah. You know, it won't be hard. And also, we're, it's the kind of town where you could basically ask anybody who works at one of the shops where I am. Pretty much. Uh. <laughs> he is known. <laughs> I'm not. And yet... I you don't go out. True, but I grew up around this That's town. That's true. <laughs> but you don't go out. That's true. I don't go out. I don't have time. I'm tired. Go to Acme. They have time there. 
Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Matt's also shaking her head at me for the record. Yep. Miss Mori for five dollars says, "Watching all the old content, but your podcast on Gabby Petito was what got me on Patreon." Oh, well, thank you, Mattis. You're such an empathetic and caring person. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, I, I, yeah, that case hit me hard from the start. Yeah. I, her brother reached out to me, and I, I mean, that that was like one of those things where you're like, I was supposed to do this. Yeah. Like I was supposed to be the one telling this story. Yeah. Like. Not not to get religious, but like sometimes God tells you what to do mm. and you listen. Yep. Whether you believe it's God or just your conscience, yeah. like listen to the little voice. That's God, I do have to make the milk militia tea, don't I? Oh yeah, NC Squatch for 501. Love it. Fantastic work as always, fellas. Also still waiting for that milk militia tea, lol. I, I will text Norman and ask him to design. I'm just going to say I need you to design a milk militia <laughs> tea. Um... Go ahead. Luxembourg Empire for $10 says, Atlantis is the capital of the great Luxembourg Empire. We will never let you find it. What if we ask really nicely? Yeah. What What if I say please? I like... Also, Irish... what if me and like four of my friends just conquer Luxembourg? It's not that big. I'm in. Yeah. They can't possibly have a better military than five American dudes. No. With no military training. <laughs> right. <laughs> well... <laughs> That's basically most of our army in World War One. Not no. Okay, a very vague amount of military training. <laughs> a few weekends of National Guard drill. Yeah, that's something. <laughs> and a bunch of friends who have spent a little too much time reading through military handbooks. Yeah. Um. Uh, I like Irish spuds for five dollars and sixty nine cents. Love it. Need to make a blob themed drink that includes milk. I think there might have been one. Was there been... one? We can. No. We can do a what was, what... We can do it with bourbon cream. Yeah, I thought there was a one that had some form of... Oh, what was... No, what was the one from Bluebird? That was a raspberry frozen gin and tonic. What, what was the... Oh, yeah, right, right, right. I thought that had cream on it. Never mind. No. Uh, Norbert Rodriguez Jr. for $5 says, most, most ancient civilizations were usually near water, so it's no surprise that we lost so much ancient history. Yeah, I, I think yeah, so. even if we don't agree that there's like a copper or bronze age civilization, there were definitely a bunch of Neolithic civilizations out there that like maybe we're talking, you know, pretty small. Mm. But I think I, I think we really need to shift the paradigm and stop pretending that history, like the history of settlements only goes back to 10,000 years ago. Yeah. Because that's just wrong. It's clearly wrong. Yeah. And, and Gebekli Tepe is proof of that. I, they're finding more of them. Oh, one of the comments I saw on, on this most recent video mm -hmm. that I, I thought was funny, uh, somebody said, how could you be a Christian and also believe in evolution? I did see that one. <laughs> um, they were specifically asking about Adam and Eve. Yeah. And I was like, you can take that story literally, but mm -hmm. you're going to have to explain quite a bit. Yeah. So I'm taking the root of, I don't have the answers, mm -hmm. but the available evidence says this. Yeah. That's where we are. Yeah. Uh, Kellen, the official data for 556. Thank Woo! you, sir. Uh, it's my job to travel the ocean hundreds of feet underwater for months at a time, and I will tell you there is nothing to be afraid of in the ocean. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot to be afraid of in the ocean. Yeah. I mean, sperm <laughs> you whales know exist. That that was what you went for was sperm whales have you seen them do they hurt people they can orcas do they didn't used to <laughs> we we messed up <laughs> we did an oopsie that's on us <laughs> so you think they know about sea world yeah <laughs> Do you we think the orcas know about SeaWorld? Yeah, well, I mean, in the 70s, to like, or like the 60s to like 80s, mm -hmm. we were taking their kids for it. True. So, like, they know. Well, they know we take their kids. That's enough. Yeah, true. If somebody like, took my kids, I'd be pretty mad. They live. I in might their... make a whole movie about it. They <laughs> live in families their whole lives. Yeah. So, like, they're more socially dependent than we are. Aren't we technically dolphins? Well, I mean, yeah. Kill the orcas. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're... Uh, they're three, technically they're in the dolphin family. Are they? Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure they're dolphins, not whales. Yeah. Cool. Jamie, pull that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next question, though? Uh, the next question is Norte Rodriguez Jr. for $5 says, How do all the flood stories compare with each other, and what are the similarities, and who exactly warned all the survivors of the event? Did we not do a video on all of the flood a stories? A very long time ago. We might have to do another one. I think that might be worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
That'd be a good weird Bible. Or no, because that's more than just yeah. the Bible. Um, as for the, 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 look up the dolphin thing really quick. As oh, yeah, for the yeah, survivors yeah. of the event thing and who who warned them, um, I, I mean, I don't think anybody necessarily warned them. Um, you get stories like Noah's Ark and everything, but for the most part, mm -hmm. I don't think many people alive when that happened were warned about it. I think it was something that happened to them. Yep. The orca, also called the killer whale, is a toothed whale belonging to the oceanic dolphin family, of which it is the largest member. It is the only- Wait, how are you a whale that belongs to the dolphin family? Well, they're mm, oceanic mammals. I knew they were a mammal. Yeah. It is Everyone the... knows they're mammals. It is the only extant species in the genus Orcanus, and is recognizable by its black and white pattern body. A cosmopolitan species, or orcas can be... Uh, can be found on all of the world's oceans in a variety of marine environments from Arctic to Antarctic regions. And wow. To tropical. I didn't know they were tropical seas. What? Mm -hmm. I knew they liked colder water. I didn't know that. Mm. Well, I watched Free Willy a lot as a kid. So did I. Great, great, great movie. movie. Uh, Ryan Whitcup for $10.54. I love it. Uh, gonna have to rewatch this one later. Always glad to see an episode. Hope the next Weird Bible comes soon. It's, uh, Thursday. Let's Thursday go. on the Weird Bible channel. Uh, been a rough go lately, and it's always helped me out. Have a sh have a good show. Maybe God can catch it at the end. Well, hopefully we'll see you at you. the end here, yeah. and we look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Jack Garcia for one ninety nine says uh, Tamar and Amnon were both children of David. Lol. Tamar and Amnon were both children of David. I am. Wh what is? I forget what we're the... talking about. Incest. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. All right. I was like. <laughs> Like we have been on so many topics tonight. Oh yeah, we're all over the board. Uh, John. Also, uh, Jack is the one who does our shoes. Oh, Jack! Hey. Nice. You can uh, you can get them from Jacked Up Kicks on Instagram. Yes, they're fantastic. Whoa. The wheel got stuck, and I was like, Oh, uh, got it. Uh, is it Joe or Johanka Zarubova? Uh, I hope I got that Looks right. Looks like Johanka. You hung up? Yeah. Uh, for is that check hundred dollars? I think so. Nice. Uh, don't know if this got sent again. So sending again. Does there exist an underwater wind to see? Would the blue snow shovel be replaced with a trident? Yes. I guess you could get the Loch Nessie. <laughs> when are we doing a Nessie video? We should do a Nessie video. We have to. Do I can't Nessie believe video. we've never done a Nessie video. You've always been against it. I just think it's a silly story. It's a plesiosaur. Yeah. We would find a plesiosaur. Of course. But it's a fun story to do. Yeah. Kind of like Bigfoot, where there's like a vast, untamed wilderness he could be in. It's a vast, untamed lock she yeah. could be in. Also, it can't be the same monster the whole time. There's got to be multiple. Maybe. I'm not saying it's a stupid legend. I'm just like, I, I think it's a little silly. You'd think we would have found a living yeah, exactly. colony of plesiosaurs in a single yeah. lock. Uh, Dan Logan. Charlie. A magical Leoplerodon. You know what's so funny? I can't think of the original video whenever I hear that. I just think of the Supernatural outtakes. I forgot that they referenced the show in the uh -huh. outtakes. Jensen, out of nowhere. How did you know that? And yeah, I'm assuming you watched it. We're doing the Candy Mountain, Charlie. <laughs> Insane. We grew up at a weird time. We did grow up at a weird time. <laughs> Dan Lopez for $2. Lore Lounge Whiskey and Cigar Review when... I mean, I could definitely do a whiskey review. I don't know enough about cigars. Yeah, neither do I. I like I'd be like, ah, yes, but... this is a cigar. Yeah, this <laughs> creates smoke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of cigar review, we just get really silly and we do a cigarette review. <laughs> we just sit on my balcony, just chain smoking various different brands of cigarettes. Oh. And it's you and me getting progressively more and more nauseous from all the nicotine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the, what's like a horrible brand? All of them? No, 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 no. But other than like object, like brutal. I don't know. I don't smoke. No, there's one. I have a pack of American Spirit cigarettes in a drawer, and I smoke one of them every once in a while. No, there's one people consistently make fun of, and I can't think of it right now. It's like Newports. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Newport review. <laughs> we go to Newport, and we smoke some Newports. Yeah. I'm talking about how Rhode Island doesn't deserve to be a state. Correct. <laughs> Who let that happen? Just be part of Massachusetts, okay? Go to Massachusetts, and then we'll let Puerto Rico be a state. It'll be great. I think we should 
I think we should do Jefferson first. Jefferson? Yeah, I think that's what they want. They want to like take Northern California and part of Oregon. Oh. And make it into its own thing. Oh. I think that's where Jefferson is supposed to be. Hmm. Sure. There's there's a number of locations where Jefferson has been provo- proposed, but it's usually like places where, like, like California, where yes, there are Republicans, but mm. not enough of them <laughs> for them to have any political power at all. Yeah. So like places where there's a veto proof majority of Democrats, they've suggested like creating new states uh, yeah. that are more balanced. So that the people living there, but but also then the the counter is like, well, why don't you just move? I still like my idea of city states, where any city that has the same or greater population than the rest of the surrounding state mm-hmm. should get its own leg- like legislative representatives. I think we should balkanize. Yeah, yeah. I think we should. I think we should split the United States into several different regional republics, mainly because I want the Grand Principality of Long Pennsylvania. <laughs> Long Pennsylvania. It's Pennsylvania, and it goes down through Tennessee. It's all the Appalachian states. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. The Grand Principality of Long Pennsylvania. Can we make a flag Yeah, for that? We should. Yeah. <laughs> Someone help us with that. The horse, it's, it's just the Pennsylvania flag, but the horses have really long tails. <laughs> <laughs> or they're just like... It's the Pennsylvania it flag, up. but it's just really long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instead of the circle in the middle, it's just a big oval. <laughs> Oh, what a silly goofy movie! It's William today. Penn, but he's seven feet tall. <laughs> or he's just tonight. The Warlock is a comedy podcast. Yeah, apparently, uh, Spoon for four ninety nine said, "Have you seen the Mountain Monsters episode on the Mothman? They say he charges up with electricity and has mind control powers. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they would say that on TV. Yep." I also know that World's Biggest Ghost Hunt faked everything at Penhurst. So, which is weird because Penhurst is definitely haunted. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to fake it there. No. Soccer balls will just get kicked at you. Really? Yeah. Hmm. How many soccer balls are there? I don't know. I just had somebody tell me that a soccer ball got kicked at them and it could not have been kicked by a person. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I can't name names because I would be Imagine in having trouble. a soccer game with some, like ghosts. I feel like it would be really hard to see them. Yeah, but at least you'd see where the ball's going. True. Ima- imagine you got like a sweet goal kick going, and it just gets knocked down <laughs> by something you can't see. It's so frustrating, right? It's like you, uh, you like you're it's like back in uh, back in Warzone One when you'd be uh, flying the helicopter with the the machine guns on it, and mm. you would just go would become invisible. Mm. That was a thing. Was it really? Call of Duty could not manage to add mini guns to the side of the helicopters without causing game breaking glitches. That is Activision, hilarious. dude. <laughs> why do everybody? Or why do they keep releasing unfinished games? Um, because we keep buying them, Aiden. Yeah, that's a good. Point. I haven't. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> You get my point. I haven't bought a game since, like, 28. Like, season three of Call of Duty was getting close to being finished, mm-hmm. and season four was going to start, and then there was the whole Nick Merckx thing, and Tim the Tatman, and all these different, like, influential streamers and all that. Mm. Basically, we're like, you know, we're mad at Call of Duty, and everybody else was like, we're mad at Call of Duty because of this, 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 and this, and mm. various, like, game mechanic issues. Didn't matter. Season four had more sales than season three. You'd think Fallout 76 would have really woken people up, but nope. 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 You have power as a consumer. Use it. Your power is to consume or not consume. Yes. Um, where were we? I don't know. We jumped far. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hermes for $10 says, Doing some research for a horror story I'm writing, and this is going to sound a little wacky, but thoughts on a Wendigo on the moon? Astronauts turning to cannibalism out of necessity also more. That is I think you question. could. I think you could make it work. Yeah, because it doesn't necessarily need to be native-related area mm-hmm. or individuals. Yeah, you can also just have one of the astronauts be Native American. Sure, and he's the one who knows all about it. Yeah, good exposition opportunity. If you make there. him the central character, then you know he gets to kill the Wendigo, and then you're you. I think that's culturally sensitive enough, and also a good story. Yeah, that would be my recommendation. Mm-hmm. Also milk. Also milk. 
Ms. Mori for $2 says, there was a Sonic in Quakertown until 2013 or 15. I have been to Quakertown. That's that, also like 40-ish or more yeah, that's the, minutes away. That's the thing is like, I don't know what they were like, all right, so there's this thing called the main line and the people there are bougie, so we're staying away from it. Mm -hmm. Like, Basically, we're in the weird in between. I escaped. <laughs> I got away. <laughs> they had me in Vineyard Vines and I, I broke out. Red Rose 509 for $5 says, you would die seeing how many of those flags were up here at uh, PNW. Way too much, Pacific Northwest. <laughs> uh anyway love you guys keep it up by the way love the longer episodes of course yeah the the longer episodes are nice because i get to really dig in yeah I'm liking those um and uh yeah I, was that even american yet i w when did we actually like make the deal with britain for what the the parallel right i, I forget the name of the agreement but the it's the 49th parallel right i think um yeah. that that was like finally like did we buy the West? I mean, how, how about when did the U.S. and Britain agree on a border in Canada? That might be a better better search. Uh, Oregon Treaty, 49th Parallel. Yeah, what's the, just look 1858? Up 1858? Oh, that's to survey the border. 1872 commission was set up to survey the border. Yeah, so the, the Pacific Northwest wasn't even American. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> Ridiculous. Good job, guys. <laughs> Hermes for $5 says, The Lore Lodge Cookbook. Please don't turn to cannibalism. Follow these simple recipes. And if you must turn to cannibalism, use these recipes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the 90 millimeter one. Here's, here's how to make long pig taste like real pork. Um... <laughs> Yeah. What do you eat in Long Pennsylvania? A lot of Long <laughs> Everybody's super concerned, and then we show them genetically modified pigs that are the length, like look Just like dachshunds. Yeah. <laughs> and they have really cute short legs. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Dan Lopez for two dollars says ten millimeter is best millimeter. That's an argument. It's an argument. Oh yeah, Kellen's. Yeah, you're comment. bad yeah. for it. Do you uh, the dollar amount? Yeah, yeah, two, yeah, two, three. Two, three, yeah. <laughs> uh, Grace Leckie for $7.89. Love it. Uh, hi from Burlington. If you ever do a video about the Bennington Triangle, Funny I'd love that. to be your Ver <laughs> Vermont tour guide. Love you guys. We uh, we were talking about doing a video on the Bennington Triangle sometime this summer or early fall. Yep. Uh, we just need to find time. Yep. That's really it. We should plan that. We should. The amount of weekends that I have free in the next That's three the months is very slowly minimizing. Yeah. Boogeyman Motorized Plunk for $5. The wild username. Love it. Uh, hey guys, I've recently started looking into the Age of Exploration and I was wondering if Aiden had any idea about how the Prester John myth slash story started. Ooh. I used to be able to answer that question off the top of my head, but uh, that would be a good weird Bible short, actually. Yeah? Yeah. We should, we should start collecting some of those little ones that don't make a full episode mm. to be like shorts. Yeah. yeah or even in, in like a five minute. You know, we, we, can, we can post a five-minute video. Actually, as long as it's eight minutes, it gets monetized, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Boom. So, maybe we do, like, like little eight to ten-minute sound bites. That'd be fun. Uh, India Cardona, who's been a member for six months. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I still don't understand why historical academics are so resistant to new discoveries that change their theories. Isn't that the dream? Uh, not when you've put 30 years into Th it. That's what you got to remember, yeah. is there's a lot of people out there who, they wrote their dissertation in 1980... They're close to pension. They're close to the point where they're retiring. And, uh, well, it would be really awkward yeah. if you retired and all of your life's work was invalidated. Yep. Um, so a lot of people are resistant to, to change because they don't want to have been wrong, which sucks. But at the same time, sometimes people are wrong. Yep. Sometimes we're wrong. Mm -hmm. It's also kind of embarrassing to admit you're wrong a lot of the time. Yeah. which is why i've just gotten very used to admitting i'm wrong because now i'm no longer embarrassed i'm just like i don't know what you expected i've been honest with you about the fact that i've got like an 85 percent accuracy rate here yeah actually probably higher than that i think i'm selling myself short i i would say so <laughs> you've, been, you've been pretty solid we haven't had to put any out put out any major retractions we should put out an apology video 
Just cause. Just cause. <laughs> We're sorry. It would get a lot of views. I don't know. We've been having a rough month yeah. with views. Maybe we just yeah, put out an apology true. video. <laughs> But we're just, just really completely vague. rambling the entire time, yeah, yeah, yeah. very vague about what happened. And it's got sad music in the background. But then at the very end, we get really specific about this one detail we got wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, in this video, I messed up and instead of saying sources, accidentally said shorses. <laughs> Speaking of which, Shorzy, we should watch. We should watch Shorzy. Uh, Dice for uh, the Danish Kroner $20, thank you, is confirming that it is Danish Kroners, and also Ian McCollum, I need to look him up. We have to call it hi. <laughs> like, all of all of the YouTube apology videos are just like, hi, period. Is I think we should do writer? it. Yeah, yeah. Ian McCollum? He looks familiar. What was the question? It was just that, uh, me, with a goatee, looked like... Oh, guy. okay. I can see it. It looks familiar. Woo. Anyway. Um, Ryan Whitcup for 504. Love it. Made it back. Did we end up getting a, the God Hates the IRS tea? I haven't found it and would love one. I keep forgetting about the God Hates the IRS tea. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, SC for 499 says, I've been binging your channel for several weeks and your content tickles so many <laughs> of my hyperfixations. You should be proud of yourselves. Thank you. We are. Thank you. Thank you. This is making me wonder things about myself. What do you mean? Uh, I hyperfixate on a new thing every week. <laughs> true. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's journalism. True. <laughs> I've monetized autism. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it works. Yeah. Uh, I can say that considering I'm the only person in this room who's not somewhere on the spectrum. Uh, True. Easy. <laughs> I didn't even say which spectrum. <laughs> I want spectrums you can't even imagine. Cat is collecting spectrums yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know the. Uh, the then we got our buddy Fred, who's not even on the visible light spectrum. Yeah. He's mute. It's so. the half man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aquafan for one ninety nine says weird Bible. When I miss it. It's Thursday. Thursday at 7 p.m. Come um, join us. Do I know what we're talking about yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> do I have time to research it? No. Will I probably stay up really late on Wednesday night? Yeah. Yeah. Or you guys can watch me do it on Twitch on Wednesday. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> me with a Bible open, just silently writing things. <laughs> Speed run Bible study. Speed run. Just explain what I'm doing as I do it. You might as well. Might as well. Dan Lopez for $2 says, Dolphins or whales? Look it up. We did. We did. Even looked it down. Tim for one dollar. Thank you. Thank you. Tim. Tim. <laughs> Aquafan four ninety nine. Just heard your answer. Someone else's question about the weird Bible. Thanks a bunch. Have another five dollars. Thank you Thursday. for the other five dollars. Thank you for the other five dollars. I hope our uh, our secondary question to your previous comment was. Do you was the cloud district? Most people didn't get there very often. <laughs> what? You didn't play Skyrim. No. You know what? I think you should do. Huh. I want to see you on Twitch do a Skyrim playthrough. Yeah. Because the idea of doing your first Skyrim playthrough in 2023 is so unbelievably funny to me. I mean, I'll do it. You should do it. <laughs> Don't, let Chat, let me know if you want me to do that. I did finally end up getting a, a webcam, like, a few months back. You have so. a Twitch channel in our... You have a Twitch, like, thread in our yeah, Discord. Yeah. Just in case you ever decide to do it. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Suddenly we both come... Twitch people on top of mm -hmm. this. Yeah. It's a yeah. nice extra few hundred bucks a month. Yeah, it could be fun. Can't complain. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll see what happens. Uh, It'd be a see. lot easier for you to get affiliate than it was for me. <laughs> Why? Oh, game. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because I tried to get affiliate over two years ago when we didn't have any followers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Valid. Uh, I'm seeing yeses. All right, do it. It'll be fun. Uh, Jarquis? 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 Let me know if I'm doing that wrong. I want to do it right. Jarquishy. Uh, Jarquish. 199. Does Wendigoon happen to live in Teleco, Tennessee? I actually have no idea where in Tennessee Wendigoon lives. I'm going to assume no. Couldn't tell you. No. Also, like, even if I did know, I wouldn't. 
tell you because that's his personal information and not Correct. mine to give up. When we hung out with Wendigoon, it was in uh, the Smokies. We got an Airbnb. Yeah. So I've never been to his home, although we were invited. Yeah. But we're not his, trying to dodge his, the His man. family is absolutely wonderful. Oh, they're the nicest people they're ever. They're so nice. Incredible his guy. His dad has so family. many cool stories, too. Oh, like, yeah. his dad's a cool dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tim for $2 says, you guys are my fave YouTubers. Aww. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's so weird, dude. <laughs> you know, weird people's favorite YouTubers? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Right? Okay. Uh, considering That's I, not real. We're not people. For how long I've watched YouTube to now be considered a YouTuber? Yeah, we have the plaque. Yeah, it is true. I keep forgetting that. I think that's what makes it official. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jack Garcia for one and says, I'm currently working on Lore Lodge shoes. Let's go. Let's go. You can get it from Jacked Up Kits on Instagram. Yes, you Love can. Uh, Bradley B for five. Our, our goal is to make it so he has no free time because he's constantly making shoes. Yes. We want him to be our little like sweatshop elf that only makes shoes and does nothing else. <laughs> and just like <laughs> reaps all of the benefits of his own labor. All, all that all that he eats is Lore Lodge coffee. Yes. Eats it. Eats it. Yeah. Like, physically. Like. No, no, no. <laughs> Monch, Monch. <laughs> Build for Monch. Do you remember, like, five years ago that you Quinto were, like... Monch was... Yeah. Yeah, you were just on that. Dude, Beast Trigger for Monch. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. Back in the day, man. Amazing. Dude, for Halloween that year, I was white bread, and my then-girlfriend was a bread chaser, because that was a thing back then. What does that even mean? It meant something in 2018. <laughs> Come on, look it up. Does it mean anything now? Not no. really, but everyone was saying, get that bread. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right, chasing right, right, that right, right, bread, right, right, right. I was the bread. Incredible. Uh, Bradley B for $5 says, Mattis looking like one of the ghost facers from Supernatural. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, hey, if we're, if we're in the lore. They were good looking dudes. Yeah. Especially the dead one. Huh? Remember the dead guy? Ghost, oh, ghost yeah, 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 I forgot about that. I wasn't sure if you meant in the show or in real life. No, no, in the show. I don't know if he's alive in real life. I hope he's alive, for his sake. It'd be better for him if he was. <laughs> Somebody said all of the benefits of his own labor? Hmm. <laughs> Most of the benefits Most of, of his benefits own labor. We get a cut, but he actually does get the lion's share of, of his profits. So, yeah, we're, he's the one who makes the Yeah, we're not, we're not out here to... Uh, we Also, like for full transparency, um, our coffee, we make less on than we than we could yeah because we didn't want to overcharge for it we didn't want to we didn't want you paying more than 16 bucks plus shipping a bag so yeah. we were like we're fine to take a lesser cut if it means you guys get cheaper coffee yeah so because we just yeah. want it to be more accessible mm -hmm. uh we have enough we can give back yes yeah. and we hope to continue to give back more and more uh core of the week for 499 says just started watching not sure what the episode is about but just wanted to say love your channel your faith and my newfound need for the window seat i am sorry that we've given you a need for the window seat personally um the, i think it balances out no man faith. should crave the window seat uh that's true also uh i don't know what this episode is about either so no it, if somebody can tell us what this was about i it, you know what chat here's what we're gonna do you guys vote for how this episode gets named after the stream yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll change it to whatever makes the most sense yeah uh hermes for five dollars says i prefer the cal or my preferred caliber is one one millionth of a football field anything but the metric system <laughs> would that be a 50 cal i hope you did the math for that me too and i'm imagining it probably is I, i'm just thinking about like football fields 100 yards so probably probably chad my real question is what's better 50 or 338 what is it with you and, like, oddly specific calibers? What do you mean? They're the two sniper calibers. 30 out six and 308. No, that's like rifle calibers. I'm yeah. talking like sni like 338 Lapua versus. Oh, uh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> this is the problem is you think in terms of, like, what's the military using? And I think in terms of what's going to be available when the world ends. Fair. <laughs> Creedmoor's getting popular. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah, I, I wish there were more 600 blackouts. Yeah, I, know. I want some more of those. <laughs> uh, Logan Giddings for four ninety nine says, Gigantia was the... Oh, you already read that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, Corey Becker for $2 says, Will you do a video on the Bermuda tr and Devil Triangle? Should just do a video on triangles. I'm surprised. Yeah, we might as well consolidate. What? <laughs> I just need to wear the most aggressive Freemason shirt while we do yes, a video about yes, triangles. Yes. 
Absolutely. Uh, Kellen, our our resident Fed, says mm -hmm. uh, Lapilla. Is it possible for you to? I agree. Okay. Is it possible for you to take a very small Illuminati graphic and just throughout the course of the video have it very slowly get bigger? Get bigger or Is fade that... in? Get bigger. Is that okay. a thing we could do automatically, or Yo. would you have to like? Oh no, work no, no. that in. Once the video's done, yeah. I just bring in the graphic, extend the length to the whole video, and then just keyframe it. I just think it would be really funny to have it like just just slowly getting bigger because everybody will notice it at a different time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll have like all these different timestamps. And it's like, do you guys see the Illuminati triangle appear at like, you know, 458? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 1370, or not 70, it's something, but like Where would we want it to appear? <gasps> play button. In the play button. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be on the triangle of the play button. And then it just slowly yeah, yeah, builds yeah. more. <laughs> How big do we want it at the end? Very noticeable. Okay, okay. <laughs> like just the whole section of that frame. In fact, what it should be, it should be very noticeable. And at some point it should be like, when did that get there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That'd be great. Little Easter egg for the uh, the viewers of the podcast. Yes. Um, Hermes for $2 says, I, in fact, did not do the math. <laughs> Love it. I respect it. Yeah, honestly. Uh, Core of the Week for nine ninety nine says, Only interaction with a Mason I've had was a co-worker who was pretty racist <laughs> and loved to correct people on everything. Anything you can say to improve my view on the Masons? Question mark? Um, well, he's one. So I'm I a pre-Mason. If you've been around long enough, I hope that speaks highly. I hope that I hope that changes your mind a little bit. Um, also, I don't know what part of the country you're from, but... Uh, up here, we have no problem with mixed race lodges. Yeah. Those are perfectly allowed here. Below the Mason Dixon line? <laughs> Depends on where you are. Yeah. Uh... Is, that, is that sanctioned? No. Is that something that happens? Yes. Unfortunately. Fair. Unfortunate. Yeah. Fair. Uh, Kellen, I got a question for you. What about the whole, uh, what is it, the. The 308 versus 65? I think that's what it is. Curious. Yeah. Uh, Fearsome Hero for $2 says, It's about me copying Brandon Swanson's drive. I'm not sure what I'm that's referring to. I'm not sure what it's referring to. Was there, a, was there another one? Was there a chat we missed? Do you miss something? I don't know. I don't see anything. Can you clarify? Por favor. Uh, I'll see. Yeah, how many yeses were there for me to do? A bunch. Yes, yes, yes. Do it. Yes. Right, I'll think about it. If there's uh, at least seven yeses, he can get affiliate. <laughs> yo, yeah. Everything but Friday's video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. We love that. Uh, Hermes for 556. Love it. Uh, another for the content list, hopefully. National Security Presidential Directive 51. I feel like that will end in tears for us. It's a lot of politics, too. Yeah. Try to avoid politics. Do you know how hard it was to do a video about Sound of Freedom? Fact checking not just the movie, but all of the articles that are against the movie? Without I... making it a political thing? Yeah, I, I can only imagine. Do you realize we're... How do you talk about QAnon without making it political? We are one of the only sources of news that actually, like, does the research and fact-checking mm -hmm. for both sides. Like, we're, we're what the news used to be mm -hmm. in the 70s and before. Yep. Yeah. Um, How do you feel about the fact that the Bigfoot channel has more, yeah. you know, desire for factual correctness yeah. than... Cable media. News network? How's, how's that make you feel? They don't care. They're reckoning cash. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not as much as they used to. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> I mean, also, if, if if Elon Musk wants to, like, pay us to be featured on Twitter. <laughs> I have just, a journalism just in case, film Elon, degree. if you're listening, just saying, you know, we would take money. <laughs> We are not. We are not above taking money from from X Corp. Correct. <laughs> but we are above taking that in a way that would affect our integrity. True. Yes. 
I well, somebody reached out to me. I, I want full transparency. Somebody reached out to me who claimed I, I did not check for facts, but claimed to be part of Sound of Freedom's marketing department. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and um, asked if I would be willing to do paid promotion for it, and I was like, "If I do paid promotion, I can't be honest." Yeah. So, no. Yeah. <laughs> Like that video, I know there's gonna be people on it who are like, you know, this is this is too defensive of Tim Ballard. This is you're clearly, you know, just Republicans. You're probably QAnon supporters. And there's gonna be people who be like, you guys are lefty progressives. You attacked Tim Ballard, and I'm gonna be sitting there like, I right, listen, man, you're both wrong. Like, <laughs> I just want the facts, dude. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the brief version of what you guys are getting in next week's video. Um, the movie combines a bunch of different stories from Operation Underground Railroad and Tim Ballard's actual lives and takes a lot of creative license with it to mm -hmm. make it into a compelling film. Um, As everything, movies usually do. Everything in the movie is based on something that happened, mm -hmm. just the story it tells did not happen. Mm -hmm. So it's weird, you know? It's it's. I mean, we don't get upset when Elvis takes liberties, do we? Yeah. So the the main issues with that movie, and again, we'll get into more of this next week, but I just want to let everybody, I, I want to say this right now so that nobody can accuse me of backtracking later. Um, like, there are certain things that Tim Ballard has said, like that 10,000 children are trafficked across, the border, trafficked across the border each year for a certain kind of abuse pur purposes. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 14,000, 14,500 to 17,500 people are trafficked across the U.S. borders every year. Mm -hmm. um, 70, uh, sorry, some of these statistics I had to extrapolate from um, global statistics. Mm -hmm. But of the 600 to 800,000 people trafficked across international borders every year that we know of, 70% mm -hmm. um, are women, 50% are children. Mm. Um, so 70% are female, 50% are children. Yeah. If we extrapolate that to the United States, where it's about 15,000 to 18,000 a year, then we're looking at, all right, well, it can be anywhere from a quarter to 50% of people are children who are trafficked. So we're looking at closer to do two or 3,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what? It's a quarter and a half of 15 to 17. Yeah, it's it. the statistics get a little bit more granular than that. Okay. Um, I have them in the... Fair enough. I mean, we're it. about to yeah, dive deep gonna, into that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so there's there's exaggerations by by OUR and Tim Ballard. There's also exaggerations by the media. Um, they say that Tim Ballard is like part of the. He believes in adrenochrome. Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't. He like he very much addressed it. And he was like, "What I said was that when I was in West Africa doing a mission, that I saw some like tribal witch doctors who were doing some creepy stuff with like bl blood of children." Mm -hmm. Um. Like it wasn't, it, it's it was not talking about adrenochrome. Jim Caviezel, on the other hand, absolutely did go on a, a news show and say that the elites torture children to make them produce adrenaline that they then extract for rejuvenation purposes. Mm -hmm. Jim Caviezel said that. Tim Ballard did not. Yeah. So that's like that's kind of what you're going to get in the video is like, yeah, this was a little like here here's what the claim was mm -hmm. it's not entirely wrong but it's not entirely accurate so yeah. we're gonna basically if the claim is all the way leaning over here to the left mm -hmm. and the response from most people has been all the way over here on the right we're gonna be like yep like we did with like we did with bohemian growth yep where it was alex jones says that this is a QAnon con or not a QAnon. alex jones says this is a conspiracy where they're burning a child effigy to moloch to moloch they're burning a child after you, Moloch. Um, exactly. Uh, we we looked into it because, mm. of course, the the response from the mainstream is, no, they're not burning child effigies to Moloch. And what what did we come up with? They are burning an effigy to Apollo. Like <laughs> it, you were both wrong. It's not clear that they recognize it's Apollo. Yeah. Now they did before. Yeah. But so you know, I, now th that's our disclaimer on on what's coming out next week. It's not political. It is not intended to be political. We don't want it to be political. We just want to help children. It's not a political channel. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't noticed that by now. Like, we just generally don't even like politics. This one literally came up because we've talked about so many missing persons cases. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this this counts. Yeah. Oh my god. This yeah. counts. Uh, killing the official data for Also, this is going to be our last set of super chats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to shoot tonight and it's not going to be a short time. Yeah, no. We got to go. Uh, Kellen, the official data for 199 says, which, 6-5, oh, PRC, Granadol, or Creedmoor? Creedmoor is the one I'm familiar with, but tell me more. 
Uh, Carlos Consorcio Castiano Perez for $6.90. Carlos $6. Consorcio Castiano Perez. That is an amazing name. Yeah, that is a very Hispanic name. Yeah, that's That's like the, the Esteban Julio Ricardo. I'm just thinking the same <laughs> thing. Esteban Julio Ricardo de la Rosa Montoya Ramirez, right? I thought... Is it Montoya before I thought de it was Rosa? Domingo. Oh, is there a Domingo in there? I thought there was, yeah. Jesus. Esteban Julio Ricardo Domingo Montoya. Montoya. Never, Montoya, Domingo, Ricardo. Yeah, it's a long one. Yeah, yeah, it's impressive that he was ever able to re that. That was such a funny show. Oh my God, it's yeah. still funny. Like, I can still watch Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and be like, eh. No, it's great. <laughs> I saw Dylan Sprouse in New York when I was living there. Like, did you talk to him? I just looked at him and I was like, is that like you? And he was like, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. The funny part <laughs> is, I get it now. What? I get that response now. Yeah. When because I'll have people I'll just be at Molly's and somebody will walk up and be like are you the guy from the lore lodge and I'm like yeah that's me yeah <laughs> and it's like as soon as he confirmed it I was like I'm not gonna bother you so I just like kept walking which we like, probably appreciated yeah he um, definitely appreciated I would hope I will tell you that also that is not like to say that if you see me in public you shouldn't say hi it's just like if my response is that I'm a little startled like, mm, it's yeah you know, it's it's kind of like, oh, wait, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Because <laughs> when I'm out there living my normal life, it's like, I'm just Aiden. You're not working, and then all of a sudden, job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hermes for $2 says, Lord's Lo Lore Lodge Podcast, episode 101. What? That's, yep. the, that's the title. Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my bad. Sorry. Did you not read it? No, I forgot. Would uh, you consider doing videos on Nexkin slash Southwestern US cryptids? Yes, I do need to do a Chupacabra video. Yeah. And uh, people, have people have suggested other ones that I think we... Uh, La Llorona yeah. is one of those. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do a few. Uh, thank you for catching that, by the way, Kat. Uh, Miller... Wait. Oh, yeah, I did that. Uh, Miller117 for $5 says, Remember our fun convo on the Scientologist? Did you find out not to talk bad about science? I'll still talk bad, but I have no self-preservation <laughs> drive. Yeah, you can talk about all you want. He really does not want me to talk about Scientology. Did you do the research? I have not. That's why you still have not decided against it. You do understand that, like, I would, I, I would have a great time arguing with Scientologists, right? Yeah, but the thing is, they don't argue. What are they going to do? Conscript me into the billion-year Navy? No. They're going to, like, frame you for every crime that you possibly could be framed for. Cool. Great content. Fair. I was framed by Scientology. Yeah, fair. I mean, trust me, part of me would love to. I know. But the other part of me is like... That's why I like being alive. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, not in prison for crimes I didn't commit. See, that's what I would do, though. I would commit crimes. True. And then they can't frame me. Yeah, I guess if they tried to frame me, then I would just... What, like, what if I committed down. a bunch of crimes, yeah. and then they frame me for a crime, and then I'm like, well, they frame me for all the crimes. And then I get to do crime for free. <laughs> free crime! <laughs> oh, I'm we live in Pennsylvania. Josh Shapiro is not going to do anything about it. That was political. <laughs> <laughs> Horrid. We're off the rails. we got to wrap this up. Fearsome Hero for $2. I joined in on you asking what this stream was about. Accurate. Okay. Yeah, fair. What, what did he say before, though? Now it's going to make sense. What? He, he, he said something. He was the one earlier where we were like, what were we? Hero. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's about me copying Brandon Swanson's drive. Oh, no. <laughs> Drunk driving. Oh, 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 right, 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 right. Oh, that's funny. Have we, ex uh, Johanna Zarubova said, uh, ha off topic, have you experienced Barbenheimer yet? And what would you wear to the theater? Okay, not yet this week. It's the plan. We're trying to find time this week, but yes. th for some reason this week, I am booked every single night. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard some crazy stuff about Barbie. Yeah, same. I, th okay, but. Because I no get pulling, because pulling. I see a lot of stuff on Twitter about Barbie. Yeah. Um. I have seen both that Barbie is like the first movie in forever to reinforce traditional gender roles, and also that Barbie is the most woke feminist movie of all time. Yeah, I've heard... I have no idea what to think. Um. I honestly, I think like what we need to do is kind of break our own rules and do some MDMA, and then go see Oppenheimer, and then do some black tar heroin and go see Barbie. Might have to. Might have to. You know. Dude. So what I've seen from Barbie is either that it's like 
men are the worst thing that mm-hmm. ever has existed or feels bad man yeah uh and then oppenheimer is just like everything i've seen from it is just me before watching oppenheimer me after my friends who went to see oppenheimer said that there's only like a minute that's worth being an imax for I'm still gonna see the whole I'm still gonna see it. We have a real IMAX theater. <laughs> exactly. So I'm, I'm gonna just to see a real IMAX movie. Yeah. For once. Oh, I, I think still, I saw Interstellar in IMAX. Then. I'm still upset I didn't see Hateful Eight in IMAX. Was that an IMAX? Yeah, they did 70 millimeter for that. Damn. They why? didn't he did like a roadshow thing because he would look, Tarantino's whole thing was that uh 70 millimeter was like almost dead. I thought he, that Tarantino's whole thing was feet. Well that's and writing himself saying the N-word in the scripts. <laughs> His third thing <laughs> was that 70 millimeter was almost dead and like some of the mm, biggest, most yes, impressive movies yes, that yes. were ever so shot. So he decided to shoot in 70 millimeter film so he could have Selma Hayek pour vodka down her leg and drink it off her feet. Correct. Yeah. That's not Hateful Eight. I know. Okay. Just another Tarantino thing. Fair. Remember when Margot Robbie just had feet on the screen for like a solid 20 seconds of, uh, what was mm-hmm. the, the one? Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yeah, why? Why? Why, Quentin? We know why. why. But we know why. Just like, why you gotta be public about that kind of thing? He's doing one for the homies of his, of, you know, his oh guild, I guess. I did not care for Kill Bill. I haven't watched it in a long time. It felt gratuitous. Fair. And yes, earlier in this exact stream, I did say James Cameron should double down on the gun. <laughs> and I still think Kill Bill was gratuitous. Incredible. Yeah. That's what a lot of people said when it came out. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the, the, the film. What do you mean? Also, the really loud, like, wee-woos throughout it whenever she gets into a combat situation. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Every movie I've seen, every TV show I've seen that has mocked Kill Bill, mm-hmm. I have very much enjoyed. Yeah, hilarious. Like, yeah. Family Guy, when they did when they did Peter Gets Fired, and it was a, like, parody of, like, Tarantino. Yeah. Hilarious. Um, I think Scott Pilgrim vs. The World has a similar uh, scene in it. Wouldn't be sure. If I remember correctly. Um... But, like, yeah. Mm. Also great movie, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. <laughs> no, Ryan, I will not leave Tarantino alone. Tarantino forced me to watch a lot of foot fetish videos. Aunt Tifa. Aunt Tifa. Uh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Just thought it was funny. <laughs> okay. Ryan, I didn't realize you were such a Tarantino fan. Why are we doing the Leave Britney Alone video, but it's Tarantino? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anyway... Uh, that's the show. Good night, everybody. <laughs> but actually, it's 9 o'clock p.m., and I have 37 pages of this. Oh, we're going to be here a while. going to be here for such a long time. <laughs> Kat's like, I'm going home. Yeah, I don't blame you. But, all right. Uh, thank you all for watching what I'm not sure has been a Lore Lodge podcast, aside from us talking about random things for an hour, two hours now. I mean... 300 some of you are still here. So. Yeah, uh, clearly we're entertaining enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but all right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the super chats. We will see you in a week. Bye, guys. This, the, the stream deck works again for the record. Also, whoever the guy that was offering cheese was, I didn't know about that until just now, but I would love some cheese. Wait, wait, wait. Preferably Gruyere, please. Isn't it Gruyere? I don't know, but I like the cheese. Is Rex a cheese? That's Geyer. 
Yes. Yeah, okay. Start calling him Greer. King Cheese? <laughs> King Cheese. Oh, that would be his name. Yeah. That would be sick, actually. Yeah, right. Rex, if you're watching, we have a new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anyway, uh, have a cheesy evening, everybody. This is the button. Oh my god, I hit the button. <laughs> Did I push it again? Life uh, finds a way. I can't push the button from here. I can't either. Hey, cat. I got it. Frodo.